already know this is Pawn, Drunk, Boxing, a.k.a. Mr. Moo, shot himself. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you already know boxing is hot. Boxing is on fire, is lit, the momentum of boxing. Oh, man. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this side of heaven. God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a great weekend, a great historic weekend with Vasilo Machinko, Teofima Lopez, Teofima Lopez, the young lion, the young phenom, beating, outboxing, the boxer, the technician himself, did something that nobody could, you know, couldn't believe that he could have done, outboxing Lomachenko. New king in the lightweight division. You already know, man. All four belts undisputed. If you want to dispute that, I don't know. Take it with the WBC. But, of course, boxing goes on. It goes on. And we're going to Halloween. Halloween, October 31st. With the monster, Eno Uwe. Now, oh, yeah, Eno Uwe versus Jason Maloney. And he has been a monster himself. Four straight stoppages. He has been a monster himself. So we, we're going to see two monsters walk inside the ring. Come. Come October 31st. Don't miss it. Y'all already know ESPN, the bubble. Here we go. And introducing, introducing the man of the hour. He got robbed by Emmanuel Rodriguez, went on split decision. So you're looking at this man going undefeated, undefeated. That's what you got to look at this fight. Jason Maloney. <laughs> How are you, mate? Love the intro. Good work. Thanks, thanks, man. How you doing, man? I'm going good, mate. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh man, I know the bubble is crazy. You've been you've been like a resident in the bubble. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been good to me, the bubble. Uh, you know, yeah. in a crazy, crazy year when it looked like boxing was gonna be put on the uh on the back burner, the bubble came along and gave me two massive opportunities. So I love the bubble. Right? <laughs> the master of the bubble right here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. So how so how has been? You've been away from home since, since how long? Uh, now, after June, I went home for – well, I, had, I went home and had to do a two-week quarantine in a hotel. But I got to see my family for about seven or eight weeks, and then we came back over here now. So – I'll be away for another eight or nine weeks again, but that's what you got to do. They're the sacrifices we got to make. And if I'm Those going home, with, if I'm going home with three belts around my waist, I'll be very happy. So there's there's no complaints here. Ooh, you know this fight was supposed it's supposed it was supposed to be around this time. You know, versus Casimero. Yeah, I don't know what happened with the business side of things, but you already know how boxing works. Us fans don't know nothing about the business side. It's kind of, you know, sketchy, but whatever happens, you in place That's now and you have the opportunity. Right. So That's um, right. what do you feel about this opportunity, man? This is everything. This is the opportunity that I've been working for for 17 years of my life. Made so many sacrifices and worked so hard to be here where I am right now, uh, about to become the number one bantamweight in the world and, Changed my life forever. Um, this is everything. So I've done everything right. I'm working extremely hard. And I'm confident that um, I'm about to achieve something special. Now, there was people that talking about this. Of course, the momentum of that fight that carried on to this fight. But I'm telling people like, yo, Jason Maloney, it's not going to be easy for no, you know, Uwe. four straight stoppages. He's being a monster himself. And, of course, the loss that you had, y'all both had a common opponent, Emmanuel Rodriguez. I yeah. thought, in my opinion, in my opinion, like I said earlier, I think it was a robbery. I think you, you really won that fight. I'm seeing you as an undefeated fighter walking into this fight. How, and that was your first time going for that world title. How do you how, how do you feel about that fight? Am I wrong? Am I right? <laughs> do you feel like – what do you feel about that fight with Emmanuel Rodriguez when, when they get you yeah. yeah, look, I, I thought I did enough. To, to win the title that night, but, you know, I, I take it. I take it how it is. You uh, you can't change that result now. So the loss there, and I, I didn't have the – I don't have that world title. So I've just got to take that as a lesson, and I did since that. That's been two years since that fight, and I've improved so much since then, and that's what gives me so much confidence, knowing how much better I am compared to that fight. You know, if I fought – 
uh, Rodriguez again or if I fought myself two years ago, I'd knock myself out or knock Rodriguez out now, I believe. So people look at what Anui did to Rodriguez and they see how I lost and that's how they want to play off this fight. But that that's not the story of this fight. I'm a completely different fighter now than I was two years ago and this is where I show what I'm capable of. Uh, I can do a lot more than what anyone's seen and this is my opportunity to show it. It's, it's, it's a hell of experience because you came off firing in your last four opponents. You'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to leave it in no judges' hands anymore. F the judges. Just me, you, and the ref. Just me, <laughs> you, and the ref. <laughs> I'm not going to leave it in the judges' hands. Not in this bubble. And not with the momentum that's carrying the Eno Uwe. Because, yeah, this is a good fight. It's a good fight. Top um, rank fighters in the bantamweight. Um, so... What's, what's, what's you, what you've been working on since, you know, to prepare for this fight, the sparring partners and things of that nature, if you want to, um, you know, share that with us. Yeah, well, I've trained for this fight how I train for every fight, and that's you know, with a completely professional approach. That's that's my probably my greatest asset, my greatest strength is how I prepare for fights. Um, I'm a true professional. I don't take any shortcuts. Um, I leave no stone unturned and I work extremely hard and I enter every fight ready to go 12 rounds flat out. I study my opponent, I put together a good game plan and I cement what I'm going into that ring to do. Um, so that's how I've approached this fight. Obviously, it's the biggest fight of my life and I want to win this more than anything. But I'm not going to go changing the way I approach fights or, or doing more because that can only that can only sort of, you know, be a negative i don't want to burn myself out and leave the best work in the gym i want mm. to go in that ring and give the performance of my life and that's what i'm ready to do i feel like i'm in the best shape of my life physically and mentally um i'm entering this feeling better than ever before and i know i need the performance of a lifetime but that's what i'm ready to bring and that's that's what people are going to see hey man you saw this weekend what a what a win what a big win what a unification bout could do the whole world is talking about what happened last week. The whole boxing world, of course, it's here from Lopez beating Lomachenko. And now the guy that they call the monster, another pound for pound caliber fighter, could go down. Could go down by another monster, <laughs> Jason Maloney. Will go. Not could. Will. <laughs> will. Will. All right. Let's go with Will. You here right now. So it's Will, ladies and gentlemen. It's Will. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, mate. yeah, I was just going to say, mate, to be there, I was at the fight live, maybe, you know, one of maybe 80 people that got to witness that fight live and to see, you know, the young underdog going there and take out someone who everyone thinks is invisible and uh, just like Anui, you know, Lomachenko put it, him and Anui on this pedestal and think that these guys are inhuman, but they're not. And as Lopez showed, anyone can be beaten. And uh, to see that young, hungry lion, you know, after that fight with all those belts around his waist, oh, that just gave me so much motivation. And I was just picturing myself being there in that moment and oh, it just lit a real fire in my belly and I want to achieve what he did so bad. And it was great for me to be there and, and watch it and really, you know, ignite that extra fire. That's, that's, that's a hell of an accomplishment, and I know you're looking for that accomplishment as well. What is the, what, what, what do you see as a weakness in, in, in Inoue? What do you see the weakness in Inoue? Oh, oh, what, oh, what do you think is the myth that you feel like, come on, guys, really, come on, come on. He's not that. <laughs> well, you... Like, I've got, a, I've got a lot of respect for him. You know, I respect every fighter that steps through the ropes, but I just don't fear any fighter that steps through the ropes. I mean, we're all just men with two arms and two legs and we all, you know, make the same sacrifices. We all work extremely hard and I just don't think that anyone is unbeatable. I see I see how good he is, but there's chinks in his armour. He's, you know, he's reckless. That He comes in and gets, you know, he, he's there to be hit, as Don Air showed in their fight. Um, he's there to be hit. you just got to be good enough to take those opportunities and, at the top level, you know, everyone's got great speed and great power. Um, I believe in my speed and my power as well. So, I've, you know, I can fire with fire and I believe that this fight's going to come down to Will and who wants it more. And I know that he doesn't want it as bad as I want it. Yeah, you got great movement. I could see, I could see you succeeding a lot of spots with your movement. Um, he, got, he, he got a good inside game. 
you got a good overall. It's, it's a good matchup. It's a good matchup. Boxer, puncher. Yeah, both boxer punches, but it's just a good matchup. It's high level skill. Um, what it does what does what does a win mean to Australia? This will be the biggest win by an Australian fighter in our history. That's how big it is. Um, it's this will go down forever. This this fight will be talked about for years and years and years to come and you know, cement a legacy for myself that my kids and my grandkids and everyone can talk about and be proud of. And, you know, I can sit back at the end of my career and say that I've achieved the biggest win by an Australian in our history. That's that's just unbelievable. And that gives me so much excitement, so much motivation to go out there and achieve something so special and to inspire the next generation and show them that we can take out these guys. We can be the best in the world. We can reach the top of the tree. Legacy reigns supreme, and especially it's becoming a trend in the sport of boxing where fighters are usually chasing purses and they forget about legacy. And I always say on my show, I say, legacy reigns supreme. You go after legacy and your kids, your great grandkids, they will live off your name. Forget about the purse. That legacy will give everybody a purse. That's <laughs> Open right. door. Your daughter, your daughter, your son, they want to go to tennis. They're going to be like, that's Jason Maloney's daughter and son. <laughs> oh, it's open. Let's let him in. <laughs> you know? That's 100% right. 100% right. It's um, obviously everyone, you got one one career and it's short. You want to get the most out of it. But for me, this is all about the legacy. It's all about achieving my dreams and, you know, achieving, winning these belts and achieving the goals that I set out to achieve. And like I said, sit back at the end of my career and say, I've done everything I set out to do. and. I can be proud of what I achieved. That's what's important to me. That's 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 what's up. And the importance, can you also tell the people the importance of also fighters to always stay prepared when your name is called? Because you could have been maybe home or you could just could have been, you know, taking, taking a break, a long break. And you'd probably be like, oh, no, you know, who is on the table? But I'm not even prepared. I'm, I'm like 25, 30 pounds overweight. Um, tell the people how how how's important as a professional fighter because to me there's prize fighters but then there's professional fighters you know prize fighter to me is the one that just stay ready when there's a contract to be handed and then they get prepared but a yeah. professional fighter they live 24 hours as a professional fighter so tell the people how how's important to always stay ready yeah that is everything to me and that's that's the number one thing i pride myself on is, is my professionalism and going back actually to the last fight, when obviously the whole pandemic thing's happening, there's no boxing on at all. Well, we got a call up on real short, not, real short notice from Top Rank to say, hey, can you guys get out here? We're launching this boxing in the bubble. We want you guys to be a part of it. And we flew over here and they couldn't believe that we got here from Australia. But we went into the Top Rank office and they said, look, how long do you guys need to get ready? And we said, literally, when we land from the airport, Drive us to the MGM. We'll get in the ring. We're ready to go right now because, and they couldn't believe it. They'll laugh and go, <laughs> nah, you guys are the only guys in the world that have said this. But that's the way we approach. I'm in the gym all year round. I don't just wait until I've got a contract ready to, to start training and work off, you know, 20 pounds of fat. I'm ready. I'm in the gym all year round, always trying to get better because in between your fights, that's when you're making biggest improvements. You don't yeah. want to just go into a training camp and try and become a better fighter in eight weeks. You got to be chipping away, chipping away, getting better every every single day, getting better, getting better, getting better, working on your weaknesses and perfecting your strengths and taking, you know, respect in this game. Like they say, you don't play boxing. You got to give this sport respect and you should always be be ready at all times and always trying to be the best you can be. If you're only boxing for eight weeks, twice a year or whatever these prize fighters are doing you're not taking this sport serious and you're not giving the sport the respect it deserves then you can't shortcut life you can't shortcut life just like that's how i always say boxing boxing translates to life itself you take a shortcut in life it's going to show your nutrition is not up to par it's going to show you're going to have some health issues. You're going to have people along the way. And who has helped you along the way who's in your corner and your circle that has helped you along the way to get to this point well, I've got to give a big shout out to my coach, Angelo Hyder, and my manager, Tony Tolsh, who are both over here with me at the moment, spending a long time away from, from all, our, all of our families. Uh, obviously, my partner, Georgia, 
and my young daughter Isla, who I who I have to leave for a long chunk of each year when I'm chasing this dream. Um, and then my family, my dad, my mum, and my major sponsors, Forest One and the Plumbers Union in Australia. They've been with me since day one and allowed me to chase this dream. So there's a few other sponsors and and a lot of other people that support me. But yeah, they all know who they are, and I, I appreciate every one of them. Now your brother. Your brother lost a, a, a tough fight with Franco, which a lot of people felt that he was going to win that fight. How's your brother doing? He's going to have the rematch. He's prepared. You know, the Australia, yeah, the Australians are like the American Charlo brothers. Yeah, the Australians. <laughs> so how is your, uh, your your brother? How he's doing? How's his training? How he's prepared for that rematch? He's great. He's great. He's over here now with me, obviously training, and he's fighting on November 14 in the rematch on the uh, Crawford Brook undercard as the co-feature. And oh, I can't wait for him to show what he's capable of because obviously he lost that last fight, but that was not my brother in there. That was, that was a really bad performance. But he, this is that's lit a real fire on his belly, and he's ready to come out here and put on a great performance and show what he's actually capable of and win that world title. And for us to both go home in six weeks' time, four belts on the plane, it's going to be something very, very special because we've been working at this for a long, long time together. Uh, it hasn't been easy. It's been We've enjoyed it, but um, yeah. this is where we make it all worthwhile. Hey, hey, what, if he's, when, when, when he see you carry those belts... When he see it, then now you're going to give him that extra motivation to That's go in November right. 14th and be Franco. That's it's right. Gonna, it, it's going to be a, a, a tough, tough fight. What do you feel about the landscape of boxing right now? You know, um, in the beginning of the intro, I said that I haven't seen boxing with this type of momentum probably in my lifetime, you know, yeah. which every weekend there's like a fight to look forward to. Not them Friday night fights that nobody see on TV. But I'm talking about every weekend. Up to probably 2021 is a fight. Like, I don't even go to the clubs no more. I don't go <laughs> out to the lounge. I don't watch boxing. Boxing yeah. is keeping me home. Boxing is keeping me home. The wife, yeah. the wife is happy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, boxing is booming. And it's um, it's so great to be a part of it too. You know, this is my dream to be a part of these big fights that the people want to see. And uh, it's in a great, great place. And, you know, I love the sport of boxing, so nothing makes me happier than, than seeing it doing so well. Um, and, yeah, there's so many fights to look forward to. And, and top rank, my promoter, doing a sensational job putting on fight after fight, weekend after weekend with this, you know, the best of the best. So it's, uh, it's very exciting and, and to be a part of it uh, is something that I'm very grateful of. Well, I, I spoke to a couple of fighters, and they said they have to have a like a another level of concentration or professionalism or focus to be in the bubble. Oh, everybody's saying that the bubble is like a jail. <laughs> it's like you're isolated most of the time. It, you know how how do you describe the bubble for the people that don't know how how hard? But every fighter said that that is not an easy transition. Yeah, it's not, but I, I enjoy it. Like I said at the start, I love the bubble. Um, so maybe you're the maybe, only one. You're yeah. the only one that said that you love the bubble. <laughs> yeah, well, well, maybe that's because, like you said, it takes some extreme focus uh, and determination, and that's something that I've got in abundance. So maybe that's that's why I like it because I know that other guys don't like that situation, uh, and I enjoy it. Uh, and I think it's a big benefit that I've that I've already fought in the bubble and and know he's obviously coming into a, an environment that he's pretty unknown and he's not sure about. You know, he's used to fighting in front of sellout stadiums, so going in there and, and fighting in front of maybe twenty people or however many they allow, um, you know, it's going to be pretty foreign for him. But it's something that I've done, and it's something you know I've performed well in there, so I know that it's it's you know it's something that's comfortable for me. And uh, I think that's a big advantage for me. So, as I said, I love the bubble. I'm looking forward to getting back in there. Um, my boy, Unravel Boxing Talk and News, asks this. He wants to know: Does does do you take any confidence going to the fight after seeing the big upset this weekend? Is there magic in the air with the upset? Yeah, there is. As I said, for <laughs> me to for me to be there live and watch it was just. Oh, so good, and it it gave me that yeah real sense that 
I already believe I could do it, obviously. You know, when I take this fight and when I'm training for this fight, obviously I believe I can win the fight. But to see someone else go in there and beat someone that everyone thinks is unbeatable and, and, and you know, to just to see how – to see how well it was received, you know, everyone's talking about Tia Fimo right now. You know, he's the the new face of boxing. It's like, well, that could be me in 36 minutes of hard work. That could <laughs> be me, and uh, it excites me, it motivates me, and uh, I can't wait. Man, you're giving me more confidence, man. I'm telling the people this ain't go. People say, you know what? I said this ain't gonna be easy. Jason Maloney, he There's got the odds. full work. There's he got odds. the full Get on work. Him. He knocking people out in his last four sh four tries. Yeah. There's a monster coming inside this ring. Don't let <laughs> it twist you. And he's still growing and he's still getting better. And of course, you know, Uwe who came, um, you know, they didn't feel like he was a monster in his last fight. If a lot of there's people that felt like, okay, the invincibility of Ino Uwe is 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 already like it's not there, the aura. But of course, they're gonna promote it that way. But here it comes, you know, it's been like upsets after upset. I don't even think what what how do you take that? Do you take that as a disrespect, upset, or you no, nah, no. Nah. I mean, I know on paper that he's obviously gonna be the favorite and you know, he's won all these world titles and he's got himself up the pound for pound ratings, you know. So he he deserves to go in there as a favorite, but I love being the underdog, I love proving people wrong and this is a big, big way to do it. So I'm ready and uh <laughs> If you're smart, there's some juicy odds, so jump on board. Hey, a lot of people want money, picking the underdog. Ladies and gentlemen, you better bet your money on Jason Maloney. <laughs> I know. <laughs> better bet you want to pay your mortgage, want to buy a new car, <laughs> down payment on the car, let's go. Bet your money on Jason Maloney. I don't know. I didn't get the – the because the, I think I, 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 my, long, my question was long enough. But um, what do you feel about – also, you know, the business of boxing, that boxers nowadays, they're very smart in, in, you know, in being a business, knowing the business of boxing. You hear the trend back in the days where a lot of fighters get, you know, jerked, get, you know, um, how you say, robbed or, you know, they just don't don't look at their finance like these boxers. Now they're coming in look, being a businessman. How do you how do you deal with the business side of, of, of boxing? Well, look, as I said, I mean, it's a short career and obviously you're putting your life on the line so you want to be rewarded and you want to walk away with, you know, some sort of security for your future. Um, but for me, it's all about fighting the best of the best. Uh, I want to give people the fights that they want to see. Uh, I'm not into sitting inside a comfort zone. I want to take on the absolute best and in the end of my career, I'll know that I did absolutely everything I could and had the best career possible, and I took no shortcuts. I didn't duck or dodge anybody. I tested myself against the absolute best and went as far as I possibly could. And I've got some big dreams. I hope I achieve them. Um, and if I don't, at least I gave this sport everything. No, no, no. Don't say hopes. you got to say you, you are going to achieve it. You are. <laughs> I think you can sense. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. But, but I'm humble. And like I said, uh, at least at the end of my career, I know I gave this sport everything I've got. And whether that's win, lose or draw, uh, I'll never have any excuses or, or, or any regrets. Now, um, also, you traveling from 20, 20 hours away, right? 20 hours right. away. Now, this is a world sport. You know, even when I'm looking at pound for pound, I look at it that boxers need to travel all over the world. You getting you about to get this title way or far away from home. You've been far away from home. I think there was a, uh, um, I think in the interview in your last fight, um, your your wife, you had a, a child, right? Yeah, that's right. Got a daughter. Yeah. So and you was away during the pregnancy, right? Yeah, for a fair chunk of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. I was there. For, I was there for the birth. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, I've missed. I've been away from home for about four months, five months of this year. So I've missed a fair bit of her, my young daughter's life, which is tough. But as I said, 
Uh, these are the sacrifices we've got to make and I'm not just fighting for myself now. I'm fighting to provide the best life I can for my little girl. So that's what we've got to do. How is, fa- how is fatherhood? Because fatherhood to me in boxing is prominent. I advocate for fatherhoods, father out there, great fathers out there. What is it? What, what's, how have you changed in becoming a father? How does, you know? Yeah, I think, I think so. I think it forces you to change a little bit. You know, obviously boxing, unfortunately, you got to be pretty selfish at some times. Uh, like I am right now, you know, leaving home for nine weeks to, to follow my dreams. But I've got a very supportive partner, Georgia, and, you know, she she trusts the process. She knows, you know, she supports me 100%. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm not just doing this for me now. I'm doing it for them. I want to give them the best life I can. So this is what it takes and I'll do whatever it takes to achieve these dreams. And I show that time and time again. And she will be proud of you. The family's going to be proud of you. <laughs> That's what I like. Oh, you want to leave any, any, um, any, um, any information where to find you at, where to look for you, any social media platforms you want to share to the people. Yeah, yeah, you can find me on, on Instagram, um, Facebook at Jason Maloney. I'm on Twitter at Jason Maloney One. And yeah, follow the journey. I appreciate everyone's support. And uh, trust me, this is going to be a special fight. So don't miss it. It's going to be a special fight, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen the upsets, it's being very, very common. Jason Maloney been living in the bubble for quite some time. He knows the bubble more than anybody knows the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> And after after <laughs> October 17, he's going to pop that bubble. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's going to pop the bubble. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Jason Maloney. And, man, good luck to you. October 31st, Halloween. It's going to be a scary night. Monster yeah. versus monster. Trick or treat, everybody. Free TV. ESPN. <laughs> ESPN. And shout out to your brother <laughs> as well. Hope, <laughs> hope um, everything is good again. Thank you for, for, you know, being a modern day warrior, modern day gladiator. You put your life on the line for our pure entertainment. Thank you. Um, the boxing world. Love you, fighters. God bless you. And do your thing October 31st. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Take care, hey, mate. You're welcome. It was an honor. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Maloney. Could be unified bantamweight champion of the world from Australia. It's going to be a big night. He's going to be a big night. He got a chip on his shoulder, been away from the family. You think he's going to be away from the family, away from his beautiful daughter and going for No, 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 no. He's going to take his anger. You got me away from my family. You know what? I'm coming after you now. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going after you, baby. Huh? Ain't nobody stopping Jason Maloney. I'm going to tell you like this. Now, oh, yeah, you know who it. Is a monster. The monster, you know, always a monster. We know that. Pound for pound dude in the sport of boxing. But Jason Maloney, like I said, they got two common opponents, Emmanuel Rodriguez. I felt like uh, um, um, Jason Maloney actually beat Emmanuel Rodriguez on that split decision. In my eyes, I'm actually looking at this fight as Jason Maloney being an undefeated champion. Not undefeated champion, undefeated fighter. But he could have won the champion that night. He could have won the championship that night. Um, but I see him as an undefeated fighter walking into this fight with Ino Uwe. Ino Uwe, um, a lot of people got questions about, you know, his orbital bone, his injury that he had versus Donaire. Um, people felt like he was not invincible after that fight. Maybe Jason Maloney went into the into the into the lab, come up with a game plan with his team to capitalize of of, of, of Ino Uwe. It's been a long layoff for Ino Uwe as well. Jason Maloney just fought when in June. He's been in the bubble. He's been in the bubble. He said he's very comfortable in a bubble. He stays in shape. And this is what I tell all the folks out there. There's a difference between professional fighters and prize fighters. Professional fighters live and breathe boxing all year round. This is life. You cannot cheat the sport. Jason Maloney stayed prepared. He answered the call. He stayed prepared. They did it They um before June. He was prepared, came to Australia. Him and his brother was prepared. And now with the Ino Uwe call, which a lot of people felt that was going to be Ino Uwe and Casimero, this is when these fighters, you have to stay ready. This is life. That's a professional fighter right there. 
That is a professional fighter right there. More than a prize fighter, that's a professional fighter right there. Always stay on the call. And I'm going to give you an example as well. Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz fought, what was it, like four weeks out of fighting Anthony Joshua won the first fight. Stood prepared. Got the call. Matter of fact, text to get the fight. And then we saw what happened that first night in Madison Square Garden. Because you stay prepared. You want the fight. You want uh, Being a professional. I don't know how much he was professional in the second fight, but we all know you got to stay prepared. Your name is going to be called. You don't know, oh, God forbid, somebody catches a coronavirus and you're the man, the next man up. You don't know somebody gets injured and you're the next man up. You got to stay prepared, fighters out there. For all the young fighters out there, stay prepared. Just like in the amateur circuit, you fight like twice a week. And you, amateurs stay prepared, stay prepared because they're fighting constantly and constantly and constantly. When you walk up to the professional level, I'm not saying to drain yourself. I'm not saying to overtrain, but stay prepared. Stay within the weight. Stay within that cut, the, you know, the, the 10 pounds, 7 pounds, you know, 10 pounds away from your fight limit. Stay prepared. Don't go into the 20, 25, 30, 35, and then come back down and then complain and then give an excuse that you was drained and blah, 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 blah. We don't want to hear no more excuses. This is boxing. This is warriors. Professional prize fighting. Pick one. Ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? And how y'all doing again? Thank you. Um, I couldn't see all the the comments at the same time. Of course, you already know I don't want to. Um, and I know this was this this was um spontaneous. It was a spontaneous. Um, like last time. Good looking out, World Combat Sport. Good looking out. Good looking out, World Combat Sport. Jason, clap it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Of course, you want to talk about what happened in the weekend, but of course, boxing moves on, y'all. Boxing moves on. And just like it was a beautiful, is a beautiful weekend. It was a great performance. It was um shout out to again, shout out to Tiafima Lopez, shout out to Lomachenko, shout out to all the fighters in that undercar that put their life on the line for a pure entertainment. Of course, man. And I apologize because that night I was so happy i was so i was enjoying myself i usually pray for these fighters after the fight because of course man this is not an easy business i respect all fighters again there's a platform to uplift the sport of boxing to uplift these fighters that put their life on the line for pure entertainment this ain't no clout this is nothing i'm serious about it i love these fighters and what they do from number one rank to the ten thousand rank over here, there's no such thing as bums. There's no such thing as derogatory names. At fighters, you could say low opposition, high opposition, not ready, um, um, drained, uh, things like that. You know, but ain't no bum when you step when you when you step inside that that ring, psh, sparring or in an actual fight. Man, you got the statistical fortitude, man. You got the statistical fortitude, the mental fortitude, the cojones, coñazo, cojones, my friends. The cojones. The boxing world, we got to stop being a delusional fan base. We discredit too much. We discredit our fighters too much. These are not pit bulls. These are not chickens. They're human beings out there. Risking their lives, fighting for their family with their damn fists. Fighting for their family with their damn fists. Some people laugh when they lose. Some people laugh when they get knocked out. Boxing is a lonely sport, y'all. Boxing is a lonely sport. And for all the people, and I'm just saying out there, that don't know that life, you don't got to fight. You don't got to train. Just go into your local boxing gym. Go out there. See the sacrifices that these fighters go through. See the sacrifices. Go to those amateur circuit. It's free. Most of them is free too. Go and check them out. Check them out training. Check them out before the fight and check them out after the fight. Check them out. So you we could so y'all could gain the respect for fighters. 
You know, one of the best clip that I like, if you ever seen, of course, we've seen Rocky, right? We've seen the movie Rocky. Y'all remember Rocky Five, right? After after Rocky Four. And you remember Rocky. Rocky Balboa. You remember that clip when he's taking a shower? Pause. Pause. All right. I'm not talking about to, to check the body in and shit like <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> pause, all right? You remember the first clip? You remember the first clip? Pause. When the dude is in the shower. And then his wife come through and they talking. It's a lonely sport, y'all. It's only one man that takes the beating. So it's a lonely sport. Ain't nobody out there parading nothing. Ain't nobody there suffering like these fighters. Ain't nobody out there. It's a lonely sport. And when you lose, sometimes you lose everything. Sometimes you lose your friends, the associates, the managers. Sometimes you lose your own woman. Sometimes you lose your own woman. You lose respect. You become the laughing stock in your children's school. They tease your kids. It's a tough sport. It's a tough sport. Shout out to Victor Ortiz too, because I was talking about that with Victor Ortiz as well. He was expressing that. And he was expressing how fighters are easily forgotten and champions are easily forgotten with all the things that he put their life, their, 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 their body through. And then people just throw them away. Victor Ortiz, I still believe in you, my brother. You go out there, you train, you, you do what you have to do. You get back how you want it. I got your back. And all the fighters out there, I got your back. Luis Calazo, you still got a lot of fight in you. Don't pressure nobody for you to retire. You keep on fighting. You keep on accomplishing goals that you set for yourself because it's only you who takes care of your family. Peter Quill and Kid Chocolate, you keep on doing what you're doing, my brother. Preaching. Enlightenment. Fighting. All the trainers out there that also sacrifice their time and their family to build and mold warriors. You too have, should have the ultimate respect because you're the first one to get blamed. You're the last one to get praised. Shout out to all the trainers out there. Shout out to all the trainers out there. Shout out to the good people around these fighters. The humble ones, the real ones. The ones that don't try to rob and take advantage of these fighters. So don't put them into harm's into harm's way, meaning harm's way, meaning when you know your fighter is not prepared to fight these type of fights, don't put them in there so you could collect that check. Excuse me. Brennan, I gotta buy some more. Let me say, let me shout out the people. My four, my four, my four. Let me shout out the people. I'm all, I'm so, oh, I'm all zoomed in. Lance, what's good? Tony, 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 Bones, well, what's good? Dave, Dave, hi too. Unravel boxing, subscribe to Unravel boxing. Um, talking news. Mark, what's good, my brother? Tony, Tony again. LP, 11 p.m. World Combat Sports. Subscribe to World Combat Sport Boxing. Let's go. Cano loco, cano loco sports. Subscribe to the channel. Guido, what's good? Major key boxing, what's good? Let's go. Prince TV, bacon, eggs, and cheese. Nick, what's good? Oh man, my fault. I ain't look at. Wasn't trying to look at the, the comment box again, so I wouldn't train my thoughts. Um, we put this right away. He said, F humble, be a savage. Um, let me know what y'all think about the 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 interview, what you think about Jason Maloney. <laughs> And like I said, man, this is this is 
Nick, 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 what's going on? Good looking out, good looking out, Nick. Undisputed. I told you a TO1, I'll drop you a hundred. And I'm a man of my word. No sour grape. Just admit those cars were trash. <laughs> Nick, you the man, a man that keeps his word, a man that keeps his word. Good looking out, Nick, a man that kept his word. You an honorable man, an honorable man. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. It was a good, it was a good night, Nick. Nick, yo, I stayed up to like nine o'clock in the morning, man. It was a good night. It was a good night. And the thing is, what, what was sweeter, like I said, what was sweet is that he did and he beat Lumachenko in a way that nobody thought he could do. Yo, there was people out there that said he only got a punch his chance. That's it. Just a punch his chance. People out there said he got some men feet and drag his feet and slow. Come on, guys. Come on. Good looking out, Nick. God bless you. God bless you and your family, my brother. Yo, no, Black and Brown, third cap, actually um, um, messaged me. <laughs> Shout out to Black and Brown Boxing. Subscribe to Black and Brown Boxing, baby. Subscribe. Yo, Black and Brown, I know your board is going to go crazy this um. Probably in the in the span of what the whole year, you're gonna be switching stuff around all day. Where you got Tia Fimo Lopez on your board, where you got Tia Fimo Lopez on your board, where you got Lumachenko on your board, where you're gonna have um Inoue on your board, where you may have Jason Maloney on your board, where you're gonna be having on oh, who else? Who else? Javante Tan Davis, Leo Santa Cruz on your board. Black and Proud Boxing got a special thing going on with the board. He has his ranking. His own ranking is good. It's good for the sport. Everybody go check it out when you get the chance. Subscribe to the channel, Black and Brown Boxing. He's doing a good thing out there, man. This is what we need, man. We need great boxing content creators. Grill, you already know, unbiasedly, logically, and objectively, you know, that loves the sport of boxing and just, you know, give us their perspective and genuine perspective at that. And if people disagree, agree, this is boxing. We fight fans. Yeah, we love the bragging rights. We always want to be the one that's right or wrong. But also, when we're discussing boxing, also, let's give our chance to hear other people out and be educated as well. Throw the, the egos and pride away. Everything is not a debate when it comes to boxing and fans. Everything is not a debate. We could learn from one, each other, from, from one another. You, I may tell you something. And, you know, enlighten you about the sport of boxing. And I want to be enlightened as well. I can't go one day without learning something. I need, I need to collect info. I need to collect info. I need my, I, I, it needs to expand. It needs to expand. And I believe that everybody should feel the same way. There's a time for debating. There's a time for education. There's a time for understanding. And sometimes if we don't agree or disagree, if we agree or disagree, we come with a common understanding and we understand where our perspective is this way. Dragon, what's good? Dragon, what's good? T.O. Fimo, third. Yo, black and brown. Black and brown. That's what I'm talking about. T.O. Fimo Lopez, third. And guess what? I was going to go live. And I was going to tell y'all my new pound for pound list. And you know what? I never actually did pound for pound content video because I feel like in boxing, things switch it around. The criteria is too much. Um, timing, momentum. And pound for pound, in my opinion, keeps on. Rap star was good. Rap star was good. Damn. I just ate. I was eating fast. Like, <laughs> Respect to punch the Teofimo fans. We might disagree, but respect all fighters, and we love the damn sport. That's what I'm talking about, Nick. Nick undisputed. Nick undisputed. Teofimo undisputed, man. It just has a good ring to it, Nick. Nick, it has a good ring to it. Nick and Teofimo undisputed. I love the undisputed word. The undisputed word. I love the word right now. <laughs> I love the word. 
Oh man, rap star was good, good. And if you thank you, my brother. Punch, what's your pound for pound list? Top five. Yo, I wanted to do the live, and then I and then um, you know, I got in contact with with, with Jason Maloney, and you know, since it's gonna be a be a, a busy a busy two weeks for him, I really wanted I, I really want to um to to drop this interview with him and stuff like that because I don't know if he's gonna be busy tomorrow. You already know, two weeks out of the out of the fight, out of his biggest fight of his life, he took his time for for us to chop it up. And thank you, Jason Maloney, again. It was an honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, drop a monthly top five punch, a monthly top five. Depending on depending on the schedule, right? So this is gonna be a good schedule. October, Thursday, December. It's gonna be a lot of moving parts, right? I put T from Lopez at four rank pound for pound. Rondo, you know what? We we got a common. We we're, we're common that way. Now, I'm gonna send the link, and I'm gonna tell you my new pound for pound list. Yet, yet this is what I called. This is what I call. The what have you done for me lately, pound for pound? What have you done for me lately, pound for pound? It's my list. Now, of course, I'm going to tell you right straight, straight, straight. I'm not. I, this is my opinion at the time. And like I said, everything is not a debate. I love to talk about it and talk boxing and persuade me. Persuade me. Make me understand my own. My own, oh, penguin, I make me understand my own pound for pound list and I could switch it up public and publicly. This is the boxing where I made this channel for the boxing community. This is not to feed my ego like a lot of people out there that does these channels that think they want to be right all day. This is for us to talk about it. Help me rearrange my pound for pound. This is my pound for pound, how I feel. But this pound for pound is dictated to me. So I'm letting y'all know. Is what have you done for me lately, pound for pound? What have you done for me lately, pound for pound? What I feel, what have you done for the boxing world, pound for pound? Pound for pound, what have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, yeah. dun, 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 dun. What have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I never really did this before in my channel because I felt like, you know, this is a cliche, a cliche pound for pound, you know, when people put their list. But this is punch drunk boxing. What have you done for me lately? Pound for pound. Number one, Canelo Alvarez. Hey, welcome. Number one, hey. Welcome. Coming in number two. Coming. I should have done it backwards, right? I should have done it backwards. Nah. I'm going to do, do my way, God damn it. I'm doing my way. Punch, drunk, boxing. What have you done for me lately? Then, 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 then. Pound for pound. Number one was Canelo. Number two. Drum roll, please. Oops, hold on. Let me type this. Number two, I would have not been surprised. Number two, drum roll, please. Oh, Alexandre Usyk on the pound for pound. 
What have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> He said, the boots. <laughs> yes. Moving on. Canelo Alvarez have jumped from the vision, from the vision, from fighting the Triple Gs and the, and the and the and the Daniel Jacobs and the Fielding and went to Kovalev 175 in the span of 11 months. He was fighting in three divisions for top five. Had two champions unified. Hacking the number one. Usyk, undisputed. Usyk, undisputed. Usyk, undisputed. We have to congratulate when you clean out your division. When you clean out your division. Because in my book, accomplishments is worth a lot. What have you done for me lately? I'm not going by what you did in 2016. I'm not going about what you did in 2017. I'm going about what have you done for me lately and what have I and what I feel you have done in boxing lately. Since we say is what you have done for me lately in boxing. So my pound for pound is dictated about what you have done for me lately in boxing. Usyk also has a victory going to the heavyweight division. Dun, 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 dun. Then, oh yeah, number three, drum roll, please. Hold on, I'm gonna put it like this. Drum roll, please. Number three, number three. Nao ya i no what have you done for me lately dun 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 ooh yeah Nao ya i no we number 3 in the pound for pound list of what have you done for me lately pound for pound pawns from boxing list Nao ya i no we three division world champion the super serious I give credit to find high ranked fighters, three division world champion, unified as last, and versus a Hall of Fame fighter, Nonito Donaire, who is still seasoned. Yes. Yes. And yes again. What have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, yeah. Coming in number four. Coming in number four. And new King Tia. Fimo and new undisputed. Hear he, hear he. To all you loyal subjects, pound for pound, number four, A23, one of the youngest to ever attain four belts, plus the ring that he's going to receive. Undisputed. Beat. Arguably the number one, two, three pound for pound for Sal Lumachenko. You can flip it around. The king of the lightweight division. Tio Fimo Lopez. Then, 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 what have you done for me lately? Then, 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 oh, yeah. Come in, pause, number five. On what have you done for me lately? Again, number four, Tiafima Lopez. Be a pound-for-pound pound fighter. And I'm going to say it like this so people can clarify, so people can understand also my decision. There are a lot of people say 
There's a lot of pound for pound fighters, right? I say the top six. But how many pound for pound fighters beat a fellow pound for pound fighter? Canelo Alvarez beat a fellow pound for pound fighters in Triple G. Teofimo Lopez beat a pound for pound fighter. Top three, one, two, three. You can flip it around. El Vesalo Machinko. Now we moving on. We are moving on. And this decision was not easy, y'all. This decision was not easy. And you already, and, and, and I left a tweet earlier on today. So you know what you expect is not going to be put down. Coming in number five. Coming in number five. Arguably the greatest of all time. The eight division world champion. Ooh, baby. Who beat Keith one Tom Thurman. Who vacated his belt. And really, that's a unified champion. WBA, WBC. That's the way I look at it. Like I said, what have you done for me lately? Pound for pound, in my opinion. What have you done for me lately? The undefeated. The best walk to wait at, the, at that time of this era. Undefeated. He beat Keith one Tom Thurman at his age. Manny Pacquiao, what have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Manny Pacquiao comes in at number five. Now there's people want to be like, well, um, Keith on Tom Thurman had a long layoff, but he came back after Jose Soto Lopez, beat Jose Soto Lopez, came and beat and fought Manny Pacquiao. Keith Thurman never got beaten for his WBC. He vacated it. So if Keith Thurman would have never vacated his WBC belt, Manny Pacquiao today will be unified WBC, WBA. Keith Thurman never got beaten. So Manny Pacquiao today will be, would be, unified champion. What have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, and also, also, Keith on Tom Thurman throughout the 2018 pound for pound when he was injured was in a lot of people's list pound for pound number four. So Manny Pacquiao beat a undefeated pound for pound caliber of fighter. Yes, Manny Pacquiao number five. Sorry, I hurt people's feelings. Now, people want to question, where is this guy that he's not number five, not in your top five punch drunk? What? Who is this? Where, where is, where is, where is Bud? Where is Bud? Punch, where is Bud? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? How you don't have him in your top five? Because this is the powerful pound of what have you done for me lately? In number six, 140, undisputed, three-division world champion, Bud Crawford. What have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, yeah. Bud Crawford, people want to question why you haven't been out of your top five. Now, this decision was not easy, ladies and gentlemen. And I might admit... I'm going to admit, I'm also a, bad, a fan of Buck Crawford. Yet, it's what have you done for me lately? In the pound for pound list, if anybody got a list, these fighters are fighting overall high ranked fighters. And I'm not talking about them ranked fighters that's in your respectable division, in, in your respectable belt federation. I'm talking about overall rank fighter. Buck Crawford. Is hanging on the top three, two, if you have them, one, five. Been hanging on that thread. Been hanging on that position. For what he did in 2017, ladies and gentlemen, we're going on to 2021. And sorry, ladies and gentlemen, me and Machine, not going to cut it. Amir Khan, not going to cut it. Jose Benavidez, not going to cut it. So we're living off. Crawford, what he has done in 140 in 2017, and of course, when he beat Jeff Horn, and what keeps him number six is whether people like it or not, he beat the guy that Manny Pacquiao lost to, Jeff Horn. 
So that puts him. And now I'm going to say it like this. And don't be mad at me. I don't care. We could talk about it. We could talk about it. Bill Crawford, next fight will be Kell Brook, a guy that's not even ranked as 147, having made 147 in three years. And we already know had trouble making 147 and damaged goods when he went to fight Earl Spence. You should have picked Keith with Tom Thurman. Nah, Keith with Tom Thurman has surgery. But anyway, you, hey, you got to make these fights happen. And if Earl Spence was good enough to fight Danny So Garcia and had a voluntary bout and you ain't had a fight, then I don't know what the hell is going on with both of y'all. The disrespect for Bud. Hey, I love Bud, but it's not a disrespectful Bud, really. Let me clear this out. Let me clear this out, and I'm going to send the link so we could talk about it. Y'all could check me on this. And again, convince me. Convince me what have you done for me lately, pound for pound. Again, Bud Crawford is not fighting high rank overall fighters for nearly three years, guys. For nearly three years. For nearly three years. I'm going to say it again. For nearly three years. And he's going to go and fight Kell Brook. Don't get mad if he's going to be going lower and lower on a pound for pound list. And it's not because what Buck Crawford is because what others are doing. We have to congratulate and we have to put others in position that's, that are fighting ranked fighters, that are fighting those type of fights that are tough. Now, if you can't get those fights, then that's on you. The business side of boxing, I don't want to hear about these streets and the other side of the street and blah, blah. Hey, that's not my problem. I'm just a fan. I'm only going to take what you give me. Moving to number seven. Moving to number seven. <laughs> Unified. 147. Split decision win last fight versus Sean Porter. Be Mikey Garcia that was in a pound for pound list. But coming from 135 pounds, B. Lamont Peterson, mandatory Carlos Ocampo. <laughs> but this is what it is. Got to face the mandatory. B. Kell Brook. When Kell Brook wasn't, but we're going too far. That's 2017. But what have you done for me lately? Unify the titles, even though I feel like that was a title that was gifted to Danny Sub Garcia and Porter to fight because Keith Thurman. Beat already Danny from Garcia and Porter, and he gave them the belt. So for me, I already knew in my mind who was the real, real true champion until he lost it. So, but can't take nothing away from Earl Spence. Earl Spence in season. God bless the Earl Spence is back. Earl Spence Jr. is my number siete. My number seventh. My number siete. What have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. Let's speed this up. Let's speed this up. Now, this was the name, and we could really discuss this, and, and, and for real, we could take this one out because I wasn't really thinking about this one. But, but since... Since <sighs> I wasn't thinking about this, but a lot of people want to discuss about heavyweight division, and they say they should have been the pound for pound. But I remember in 88, 89, my title was pound for pound number one. They used to recommend the holy few as well, pound for pound. So why are people gonna tell me that I can't put no pound for pound heavyweight on the list? The man that beat, the man that beat, the baddest man on the planet. The man that bullied the bully. The man that beat the man that defended his title for 11 straight times. What have you done for me lately? Then, did it, then, then, ooh, yeah. Tyson Fury.
Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. Tyson Fury. Now again, I'm going to send the link after I finish, and we're going to be chopping it up. Again, this pound for pound list, what have you done for me lately, pound for pound, is not, you know, set in stone. We're going to talk about this. We gonna talk about this. The boxing world gonna talk about this. So don't come dissing me right quick because I'm giving y'all the chance so we can reconstruct certain things. Okay, all right. The Gypsy King, the Gypsy King beat the baddest man of the planet, and not only beat, he wins as 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 ooped his ass. Okay, and I was going for Deontay Wilder. And yes, Deontay Wilder before was on my pound for pound list that I never put out. But Deontay Wilder was on my pound for pound list. Rap star in the building, good looking out. Rap star, good looking out. Good looking out. Moving to number nine. For the punch run boxing. What have you done for me lately, pound for pound? This one may get people a little rowdy as well. But again, but again, number nine, number nine. What have you done for me lately? 11 p.m. I like that one too, man. I like that one too, but we could discuss that, but it's not. But you know what? It is Josh. It is Josh. But number nine is Josh. No, 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 no. Where the hell is that? Hold on. Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor, my number nine. Pound for pound. Number nine. Pound for pound. 140. Unified. Super Series. Be being undefeated. We're um, 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 fighters. Pound for pound. Josh Taylor. Last fight. Got his man in the stretcher, pound for pound. What have you done for me lately? Boom, ba -dum, dun, dun. Ooh, yeah. Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor. And coming in number 10. Drum roll, please. Coming in number 10. Coming in number 10. Debut. Pay-per-view. I don't care what the numbers did, but I was entertained. Unified champion. Been fighting the most underrated resume, in my opinion. An intriguing division. In which you don't know what's going to happen. But that fight, last fight, we said to himself, he has separated himself. He has taken a loss and beat the man that, 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 I mean, he beat the guy that beat him and stopped him. The guy that stays in shape all year round, no matter how you don't like the way he talks and shit like that, but he backs it up and backs it up and backs it up again. From the Lions then. Jamel Cholo, what have you done for me lately? Boom, 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 boom. Ooh, yeah. Lisa Bales was good. Was good. <laughs> What's good, Lisa? What have you done for me lately? Then, 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 then. Ooh, yeah. Now, I'm going to mention a couple honorable mentions. So when we discuss this, we could see if they could be on the list. Or we could up certain people on the list. We could up certain people on the list, right? All right. Honorable mentions for me. Estrada. Josh Warrington. Anthony Joshua. Jose Ramirez. Again, an honorable mention. We're going to discuss this, Jet. We're going to discuss this. <laughs> a 
Triple G. Honorable mentions in which we could take out certain ones. We'll see. Let's try this honorable mention. Because to be honest, I was not going to put any heavyweights, right? And I'm like, wow, why am I going to do that? Why am I going to do that? Not take up any heavyweights. So in, 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 in reality, I was not going to put Tyson Fury and Estrada was going to slip in my in my pound for pound. That's what happened. I had to put uh, I put Tyson Fury, but on my initial, I got the paper right here. I have the paper right here, and I was going to put Estrada in my top 10, but I put Tyson Fury in it, and then it dropped him. That's our, he's honorable mention as well, Jose Ramirez. So let me send the link. Again, this is what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? Pound for pound. Okay? Let me clarify that again. This pound for pound is what have you done for me lately? Capital that, capital that, capital that, capital who? <laughs> Capital that shit. Lately. We need one pound for pound. Y'all already know who I got. Matt Serrano, baby. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Katie Taylor. Uh-uh, uh-uh. McCaskill. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> I don't put heavyweights personally. I know, I know. It was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. If I take out Tyson Fury, Estrada goes in there. Or Jose Ramirez. Or Jose Ramirez. Now, of course, you're going to be discussing why I have Crawford out the five. Because of what I said. What have you done for me lately? You're just not going to be fighting unranked fighters. You're not going to be fighting unranked fighters. Back to back to back to back. While other fighters in the pound for pound list are fighting ranked fighters and are elevating. It's not that Book Crawford is like I'm trying to put him down. It's that other people are doing more. So let's say Us Un Inoue. Ino okay. Inoue is number two. My number two. In his next fight, he's gonna be fighting a top 10, probably top five Bantam weight in Jason Maloney. That's a good fight. You're not gonna get props for beating Bell um Kel Brook unless if it, 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 I put it this way: if Book Crawford would have fought. Kell Brook in 154 and go to 154. Now we talking. Now we talking. But if you want to drain Kell Brook to come to you in 147, it's not going to happen. Uh-uh. He's not racking 147. Hasn't been racking 147 for years. So sorry. You fought. You fought. You fought. You're going to fight Kell Brook. You fought Khan. You go fought Mean Machine. You fought Benave Benavidez. Sorry. It's not going to work. Sorry. It's not going to work. It's not you're not gonna be stuck in number two, number number two, number three. Why are you fighting these guys while everybody else is putting in work and fighting ranked fighters? I'm sorry. Hey, Penguin, at least he's top, at least he's in the top 10. At least it's credible. At least there's some that there's a skillful dude that you're about to fight. Yeah, I could do that, I could do that. Let me send the link. Let me send the link. Let's discuss this. Let's discuss it. Smash the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the like button. And also, we could talk about what happened um, this past weekend. What have you done for me lately? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, yeah.
So, before we talk about this pound for pound, also let's talk about the interview and what y'all feel about this um, upcoming fight with Jason Maloney versus Eno Uwe. And it's going to be a good day, Halloween. It's going to be a Javante Tan Davis, Leo Santa Cruz, Usyk versus Chisora. It's going to be a wonderful Halloween, a wonderful Halloween in the sport of boxing. Let's talk about the beautiful night, October 17th. <clears throat> the beautiful night in October 17th in which a star that I always knew was born. Mr. King Teofimo. King Teofimo. Ladies and gentlemen, King Teofimo, damn it. Hear he, hear he. Kiss thy feet. Kiss thy feet. Kiss thy feet. For all you loyal subjects who hate. Aunt King Tio Fimo, kiss thy ring, kiss thy feet, I say, kiss thy feet. The WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO, Ring Magazine, World Champion, Lightweight Champion of the World, King Tio Fimo. Hear he, hear he, your highness, your highness. King Tio. Remember when I said the takeover is here, the takeover is now. The commander-in-chief of the generation. The commander-in-chief of this generation, ladies and gentlemen. The captain of the generation, the captain. I'm talking about no Captain Hook. I'm talking about no Captain Hook for Peter Pan. I'm talking about the captain of the generation of combat sport. Modern day wars, modern day gladiators. The one they put their life on the line for pure entertainment, baby. This is Tio Fimo Lopez right here. I told you he was going to take over the sport of boxing. Ooh, baby. He was going to take over the sport of boxing. And he is. He is the king right now. He is the face of 23. He, he's going to reign supreme because they're going to see reign supreme. He's doing what Oscar the Hoy and the other greats did it. Oh, yeah, baby. They said that this fight was going to be easy. They say this fight was going to be Canelo Alvarez. And maybe with he's Canelo Alvarez. Oh no, baby. Oh yeah, he put Honduras in the map. He put America to the map. Oh yeah, he represented Latinos to the fullest, baby. Yes, he stayed ready. He stayed prepared. He outboxed the boxer, baby. He powerful power one, two, three, baby. And you can flip it around. The king of the generation, baby. He has separated himself. He has separated himself. Woo! 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 Jack Cow, what's good? What's happening to me? I can't hear you. Is it me or is it you? Jet, Jet. Nah, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, jump back, jump back in. Woo! T-O, 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 the captain, the captain of the generation, baby. Yes. Rap star, what's good? Yo, yo, what's up, bro? Can you hear me? I could hear you loud and clear. Got the Lamborghini wrapped all in yellow. Is that who, whose car is that? Is that Danny Swift Garcia's car? Huh? No, he got one too. Danny Garcia got the same car. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Ron, Ron, Ron Finkley, what's good? Yo, yo, bro. yo, what's good? What's good, y'all? How y'all doing tonight? We're I'm doing, good, doing great. <laughs> what's up with you, bro? How you doing? Man, I'm doing better now. Yesterday, I couldn't even move. I was so excited Saturday night, man. That was the best card I ever seen in my life, yo. <laughs> Lately. You know what I mean? Like, I was that focused, bro. I, mean, I don't know if I called him to your show that night, Punch, but I hope I didn't because I was, I was tipsy, bro. I was no, you tipsy. Did, you did. I th yeah, you oh, okay. did. Hey, how many times we did know. everyone watch the fight after the fight? How many times you watched it after the fight? I haven't watched it again. I only watched what it what one what time, bro. What's up, Guido? What's up, Guido? What's good? Hey, my love. What up, Carlo? Okay. Yo, what up, guys? What's going on? All good, yeah. bro. Smash. I'm putting some respect on Lopez's name right now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I see a lot of people petty right now. Everybody's mad at Lopez. <laughs> 
Oh, Yo, that man. Why they mad, bro? They should be Yo. congratulating them, bro. That's they not many fanboys everywhere. Look, That's look, what look, it look, is. Look, 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 they not mad. Just everybody out there, prepare for narratives to be changed. That's all it is. Nobody's mm -hmm. mad. Remember everybody's, uh, 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 um, you know, first, first. Remember all those channels that was going for Lopez to win because they don't like Lumachenko. Now they want to turn on Lopez because they're trying to create this narrative that he hasn't, that he needs to do something else in 135 to legitimize his position. But in my opinion, guilty. I'm does. guilty for that. <laughs> he does. In my opinion, in my opinion, I understand though. Ron, I mm -hmm. understand. I understand. But yeah. at this point, this is yo, but, but you know why? Because this is why I've said it's nothing really to have to do too much. It's, it's not really the Devin Haney situation, it's the WBC. I knew the WBC was gonna make him look small in the expense of, uh, of Loma and Tio. I knew it. I knew it. The oh, man yes, walked in. Hey, but that's WBC. The WBC won't allow their belts to be like that. Remember. Remember, Lomachenko walked in with his belt. He walked in with his WBC belt. Everybody had the belts on the line. Remember. This picture right here. That's right. Was... Yeah. Now, when people want to say the other belt is real, technically, that belt that he's holding was earned. Now, one of them is the franchise. The other one is the world championship belt. That belt right there that he's holding in his shoulder was earned, though. Well, that might be a conflict of interest then, because um, I guess um, they didn't want to they didn't want to discredit um Al Heyman or 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 Devin Haney for that matter because he was mandatory. So I that's, get it that he got that he belt. He was never mandatory. It. That's the glory right there. What you seen in the picture? That's glory. He was never that's something that money mandatory. cannot buy. You don't know, you don't understand and what if, I'm saying? And if he was mandatory, give me the date. Give me when the WBC announced that this that Devin Haney and Lomachenko was mandatory. I did a video already. Lom uh, uh, Marisa Sudamon said on Boxing Social before Devin Haney for him for his interim. He said Devin Devin Haney, the winner, would not be a, would not be mandated to fight Lomachenko even before the franchise came to play. I've been saying that the WBC been playing games since day one. So when they elevated the Devin Haney, I said, throw that belt in the garbage. I've been very, very consistent. And they have proven me right all along. In that Zoom call, they proved me right. This night, they proved me right again. And if, The youngest and, and undisputed if, champion. And, and if this is false advertisement, if this is ESPN false advertisement, somebody could get sued. If this is yeah. false advertisement, undisputed, then somebody could get sued, right? And if the person don't want to get sued, then it's not really a big deal. But the whole world seen this. When you have Manny Pacquiao tweeting that this is a un that that, that Tiffany Lopez is undisputed, you got Peter Quillen, you got Carl Frampton, you got a bunch of fighters that see Mike Tyson, Lopez everybody as undisputed. Yeah, I, seen Frampton tweet. I seen the Carl Frampton tweet. Exactly. So they so you know what? Look, we all understand. The technical, we understand the bullshit of WBC. We know that Devin Haney holds that strap, hold the strap. But when your contemporaries, it's something about when the fans talk and how they look at you. When your own contemporaries, when legendary fighters look at you as the undisputed, it's like Jay Z said, We don't believe you, you need more people. <laughs> Well, he, well, we got the whole boxing world 50-50 on this, I feel, you know, because everywhere I go, I seem like it's, it's half and half how people feel about it, you know. Because hardcore boxing fans, the more of the hardcore boxing fans know yeah. the situation. They know the situation. But this fight was a worldwide sport uh, um, event. UK, UK, Asia, everybody was on deck, all the celebrities. Yeah. Casuals. This is ESPN seen by a lot of people. Yo, legendary fighters, fighters that's 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 
fighting right now. They all saying, yo, 90% is saying this dude is undisputed. So and puns, let me say something real quick. They did a great job promoting the fight. Because you know, when you go to a deli store and they start talking boxing, hey, you know how they promoted a fight well. Because I was in the store the other day, right? And they were talking yeah. about Tefima Lopez. Who you got in that fight? And everybody started start talking. And it's weird because we don't really talk boxing. You know how New York is, bro. They don't really talk boxing like that. And they really did a good job promoting the fight. You know? Everybody nah, was like, watching that fight. Now nah, I'm going to tell you what, what, what will be fair. When there will be no ashtray, where there will be nobody talking about franchise or email, where ain't nobody going to be talking about undisputed or not. I want Devin Haney. Look. If he's if Tiffany Lopez stays in 135, I want Tiffany Lopez to fight Devin Haney. I'm gonna say it again. If Tio Fimo Lopez stays in 135, I want his next fight to be against Devin Haney. He made but, 135 easy, so I'm assuming he's but, dead. But 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 this fight will be highly more respected in 140. Well, you know what? You got a point, but like Devin Haney hasn't really fought anybody. Like as far as relevant at one thirty five, I would love him to like move up. Him. Yo, I would like for them to stay at one thirty five. That's just you me. Like, my bad, bro. Will you imagine uh, if he moves up it. and becomes undisputed at one forty? Damn, that's sick. That's yeah. what I'm saying. He got He's chasing. He's chasing greatness, and, and and you can't. He's not going backwards. Yo, Lomachenko was the man at one thirty five. Lomachenko was was regarded pound for pound, one, two, three. You could flip it around worldwide, not in America, not in the UK, not in Asia, not in Africa. This man was world renowned, pound for pound, one, two, three. You could flip it around. A lot of people have him two, a lot of people have him one, a lot of people have him three, right? Tiofim Lopez beat the best guy light, lightweight. People beat the guy that's pound for pound. People beat the guy that people still see him as a WBC champion. It's, I mean, you guys have got to look at it this way. Coming from England, Eddie Hearn has his views on this situation. So does Eddie Hearn not exist? Does Zone not exist? With the Haney camp not exist? I mean, they their view is that they still exist. You see what I'm saying? And as well... Eddie Hearn, Ed, Eddie, Eddie, but this... I feel you, rap star, but you know what? This is what I say. This is what I say. No, I just wanted to correct you. Why no, don't none of them call out the WBC? Exactly, that's what I'm, I'm about gonna, to say, rap star. I'm come with this because I've spoke to some of the camps. I want to know why they're not calling out the WBC. Ex I know rap star's not going to get a lot of fans for, for that situation. No, no, no. no. But, that's what I, I was about but, to say that right there before you said I was about to say that. I said, do not critique the fans. Do not critique Punch Drunk for saying what he's saying because they, yeah, and I'm talking about the Eddie Hearns and I'm talking about the H H Haney Camp. Y'all didn't criticize the WBC publicly. So you can't fault fans or, or, or boxing heads that may be saying what I'm saying because y'all not mad about the WBC and the way they, they, they advertise this fight. No, but it was Mauricio Sudamon that said that Lomachenko's belt is higher than, than that and is, is the true champion. It was Mauricio Sudamon that said that. So Eddie Hearn, Devin Haney Camps, and his fan, you go and attack the WBC and bring out Mauricio Sudamon publicly into your streams and your channel and let him say what he has to say, but say it in your face to see. Y'all got to correct them. So because Eddie, Eddie Hearn stays shut. Yeah, so plus. because what you're saying is that the, the belt they got is not holding that much weight is why they can't call him uh, call out a fight straight away. Is basically what you're saying, and the other thing what we're saying is that you're you're saying that the WBC ain't recognizing him as a mandatory challenger because of his belt. And I and I want to say this real quick. Why is it he has to fight um fucking David Haney and like he's obligated? How come David Haney why ain't gonna see a fight for the for the you know fight each other first and then fight for the belt? You know, I think they should do that first. Why is Theo, Theo got to do all, all what they say? Theo's the king right now. No, you know no, you guys, you guys have got a point that Theo Fimo has gone He's the king right now. He beat the best no, at 135. No, no, it's wait. time for these young guys to step up the game. You know yeah, you're right, Guido. You're right, Guido. It's time for um the rest to step up. Like, I'm I'm not happy with um Tank. I'm not happy with um with Ryan. Well, I'm kind of happy with Ryan oh, if he Ryan's actually goes through with the fight. If he go through with the fight. But you know what I mean? Like, it's Campbell. But like that, Devin Haney has been ducked, man. So that's all. I'm just caping for him because I want him to get the fights that he really wanted. That's all it says, man. Yeah, but I want to see him fight to my well. better Gamboa. 
country is saying, why don't they call out the WBC if they've got the belt to show that they want to be in position? They are in position. But they, they cannot trump the franchise belt, though. They are in position. They yeah, have a WBC belt. Out. Yeah, but WBC, uh, uh, Marisa Suleiman is not recognizing it uh, and not showing us that it's, uh, yeah, that belt is in line for the next fight. Well, the World Boxing Council has a board of governors and people to vote on that. They voted to devalue the presence of that belt. So therefore, Why? what can Devin Haney do except, like you said, get on the phone, see if they can make some type of... Um... They got to make some noise. No, they already been making noise. I'm pretty sure Bill Haney and them behind the scenes have been making all the phone calls they possibly can, man. And that and that's what it is. That is the behind the scenes. Right. It shouldn't be behind the scenes when Mauricio Sudamon is saying what he's saying publicly. So you I, they should give that the same energy that, that was for Gary Russell and Devin Haney. He should be on here on every platform advocating for Devin Haney to be recognized, you know, to fight Tia Fimo and Get Mauricio Suleiman on the horn. Okay. Yep. Got exactly. but world, combat, yep. world combat. Let me ask you something. Tia Fimo has just fought one of the hardest fights ever that no one gave him a chance to win. Right? I gave him a chance. No, let, let people me just people did give him a chance to win. Let me, let me just ask you a question. Even if they say, if Tia Fimo says, well, no, you need to fight a man in mandatory within Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. They're not going to complain with that because he's got a right to even say that, that I'll fight the winner for more money then. Do you think so? Do you think who would fight the mandatory? Like if Devin Haney would fight the, the mandatory between Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. I mean, that would be good because if they're the interim, if they're the interim, mm -hmm. it makes all the sense in the world for Devin Haney to fight the winner of Campbell Garcia. Of course. Absolutely. But would it be? Well, we know, well we know when Ryan Garcia want to put um, Devin Haney on his the people that he want to fight. He want to put him like fourth or fifth. Correct. You're him. right, Ronald. Hey, you, you're right. He said it in the ring. So therefore, yeah. it comes down to the belt structure. If they're fighting for the interim title, then they're next up. You know what I'm saying? Devin Haney should get that next up, man. But I know he won a big money fight. T.O.'s on top of the world right now. And he want that big fight, man. Yeah, he's going to go for the money. I said, I said that too. He's going to go for the money the next fight. He's going to go for the money. He feel would like he, he was short. Would Devin Haney do the same thing? If Devin Haney was in position, would he go for the numbers? I think so. Look, if it was the other way around, I'll be saying the same thing about about uh, about T.O. I'll be saying, yo, WBC and T.O. Yeah, you got to speak about the WBC. What the hell is happening? I'll say the same shit if it was the other way around. That's what I'm, I'm saying. This you, Lina, it only it only comes going at WBC comes in the expense of Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, when we talk, it may sound like we're, 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 we're you know, Discrediting or whatever, devaluing or whatever, Devin Haney, but that's WBC's fault. No, the, but say, say, so the WBC the themselves are the one that's making them look small. It's not really us. We're just saying what the hell the WBC is saying. That's all we say. Yeah. We're just saying what the WBC is saying. We're saying what Mauricio Sudamon is saying. I'm going to be first to say it that, that Tiafimo Lopez. I'm so tired of Mauricio Sudamon. I'm tired of his dumbass. Fuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say, <laughs> say, what's, what's good work? Be, I, I will be the first to say it, that Devin Haney, I mean, Teofimo Lopez would not face Devin Haney at 135. He's going to go to 140, man. Period. Is that where the bigger money is, World Combat? Is that Absolutely. Where the bigger money is? It separates him from his from his competition and his peers, man. It's all about separation. So you say know, if they you, sat with Bill Haney behind the scenes and said to him, look, it's a bigger money at 140. You'd get much more money. I'm sure Bill Haney's camp's all about the numbers too, right? Well, they're not in position as Teofimo Lopez right now. Teo is a unified champion, man. Come yeah, on, he calls dog. the shots. He calls the shots. We agree. Yeah, he calls the shots. So, so you know, them wanting a big money fight and all the crowns that go along with it, of course they want that fight at 35. But business, boxing is a business, man. Yeah. Hey, y'all know that. I'm not telling you nothing you don't know, man. You know that. Yeah, it's all black a and Black and brown boxing was good. What up, punch? What up, what's, black and brown? What's good? What's good? Talk to me. What do you feel about the 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 weekend? Where you see Teofimo Lopez, and where you see the you know this this discussion that we just finished having? I just got back to my phone right now, so I'm late. I'm late on the discussion you've been having, but I ain't got the chance to talk to you since um since Saturday night. So 
I just want to tell you, man, tell everybody, I was so impressed by everything I seen in Tia Fimo. The growth, the growth from fight to fight, from the Nakatani fight to the uh, Kome fight, the growth is, is, it was crazy. The growth in skills, the growth in body, the growth in strength, it was just crazy. He was so sharp. Um, I was, I'm just so impressed. I got nothing bad to say about the kid. Um, he, he's won me over as a fan, and for me, that feels good because I didn't, I didn't buy into the hype of Tiafimo Lopez right away. I, I, I waited, and he earned me. He earned my fanhood. I'm a fan, man, and I, I don't really know what else to say, man. Any bad talk about T.O. can you, – you guys can put that shit somewhere else because <laughs> whether you like it or not, Tiafimo holds all the cards. Tiafimo does what he wants. And yeah. as far as Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, they got to catch up. And if you want my opinion, they got to fight each other. They want to get to T.O., they got to fight each other now. Talk to I would just tell the I would just tell the about that. And, and, hey, and then they got to fight and stop up. This, and then maybe we can start Maybe we can start pressuring Tia Fimo to fight the winner of that fight. But until then, T.O. does what he wants. Preach on. Preach, preach, and preach again. And I'm going to tell you like this, y'all. I, I, yo, it's all momentum and timing, right? All these fighters are fighting around the same time. So trust me, Javante Tank Davis, Beast Steel Santa Cruz, you're going to hear T.O. And, and Tank. T.O. Tank. T.O. Tank. Then comes Devin Haney. If he destroys Gamboa, that's what you're going to hear. T.O. Tank. I mean, T.O. Haney. T.O. Haney. But then here comes Ryan Garcia fighting Luke Campbell, in which that fight is more respectable than these other two fights that we just mentioned. Or oh, Ryan Garcia versus T.O. It's a bigger money fight. See, you know what? See, see, here's the thing. If Devin Haney get past Gamboa, maybe Tank should fight Haney right off the bat. Right off the bat. And then they could fight each other. Like, that would be a bigger fight because that would give Devin Haney money fighting because we know that um, Tank has a lot of fans. He can get a big money fight with um, Haney, in my opinion. In my opinion, they had good. Deep Jefferson was good. It's, it's set up. up. It's set up, in my opinion. Tank can fight Loma, let Ryan Garcia fight Haney, and then they can have a little tournament and fight each other. But until then, th these guys got to do something to catch up. Everything you guys been saying over the last few months finally came true, right? And for me, I wasn't going to give him the credit until he did it. And he did it. Now he deserves all the credit. Say, man. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Hold on there, Ron. Hey. What up, brother? What's up, brother Ron? But let me get on in this because it's two people that I know for sure. What's up, D? Tio Fimo Lopez all the way. That is me. And my man punch drunk box. All right. Yo, it was me too. Well, you, you need to open Yo, your eyes a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I also picked oh, up my way. You gotta open up it your eyes a little too. bit more and do some slow research. Slow down. Slow down. I put an Instagram post up saying he was sleeping, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You slow down. Slow down. Hold up, just let me have this. Let me have this. This shine in the sun for just a little second. No, that's shade, right there. Yeah, that's shade, man. Now. Now, yeah, I, 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 I need over. everybody to know something. Black and brown, much respect to you, my friend. I heard you talking when I was coming in here. I heard that. Much respect. But this is the this is the thing, man. For over a year now, over a year now, this ain't been no here recently. That idiot, he knows his sports. Over a year ago, I used to be on his channel trying to tell this dingleberry about Teofimo Lopez. To this day, this fool is still calling him a hype job, which he's just making himself look dumber and dumber every time he puts a video out like that. But here's the thing, guys. I've been hold on, hold on, hold on, D. Hold on, D. Let me shout out the, the super chat. Hugo yeah, Sanchez, yeah, good looking out, my brother. Good looking out, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that, my brother. God bless. Now, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. A lot of these prospects... A lot of these prospects in boxing, and I agree with a lot of you guys, they got to prove it, right? They got to prove it. They got to get up in there and do something. The Nakatani fight, bro. I got to go to this Nakatani fight. Teal Fimo caught so much hate, so much disdain from that Nakatani fight. But people got to understand this. And even back then, I'm arguing with everybody. That's the kind of fight that makes a boxer what Teal Fimo is today. 
Devin Haney, Tank Davis, Daniel <laughs> Dubois, Joe, uh, uh, fucking um, uh, Virgil Ortiz, Boots Ennis, all of these Shakur Stevenson. What fight have they been in? They gave them adversity. None. None. And we all knew that Tank was going to beat the hell out of Pedraza. And, and don't even talk about nobody else on this record because they was older guys or guys moving up. They never faced adversity. After this fight where Telfimo faced adversity and everybody gave him heat, he was exposed, blah, 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 blah. He demolished Comey. People said, Comey going to knock him out. Comey going to do this to him. He's stepping up to the plate. He demolishes this kid. And then he goes and do the impossible because I didn't even believe he was going to outbox Lomachenko, but that's exactly what he did. He outboxed Lomachenko. He took those angles away. He stopped that little shifty spin that Lomachenko does, right? Mm -hmm. He kept him at the end of the job. He outboxed the best boxer at 135. The doubt about Teofimo is over with. It's the fucking takeover, it's over. man. It's the takeover, it's over. man. You know what? You know what? Classic example has to be like a Sean Porter back in the day, how he was getting beat up or getting like, you know, outboxed a lot, but then he honed his skills. Not saying Tiafomo Lopez was that, you know, mediocre, but like that's what I get out of that, what you said, the Jefferson. Yeah, he was see, that's the thing. He was never mediocre. It, the thing is this, like a lot of people that was judging Tail Fimo, they never seen this kid in the amateurs, fam. And and yep. as a fighter in any combat sport, you if you don't have to pull all the tools out the bag, if you get in the first two rounds with a guy, you say, Oh, this guy got nothing for me. You don't have to pull all the tools out the bag. You don't have to go out there showing that. But you gotta look at it, the, the kids. Listen, you don't go 150 in 20 fights in the amateurs and not know how to hit and not be hit. You don't do that, fam. And no, he did this. Uh, D. Jefferson, as a young kid, yeah, he had to dig deep in that fight. It wasn't easy. He had to dig his soul deep. And he did that. No, listen, nobody's ever retaliated to Lomachenko like that in the late rounds. And even in the 12th round, yeah, I had a lot of respect for him because he came back with his own shots, which scared Lomachenko and they hurt him. And nobody's ever done that. And that's a young little lion. You gotta give him respect. That I gotta say. Facts, facts, bro. He's been studying the dude. All he's been thinking about, dreaming about, is Lomachenko. If people actually want to sit there and think that he was just gonna come in there with a Philly show on the right hand, how stupid is that? How many times do we have to listen to that punch drunk? What this kid gonna do? Dragging his feet. Coming in there oh with a finish God, shot that was, the right yo, I think that was, I'm sorry. I, that was one of the worst takes I ever heard of Tiafimo Lopez that day. We was on the same pen. Right. <laughs> oh, I was in the comment box and I'm like, yo, what the hell are but, they talking about? Right. Hold on, hey, let guys. me get this, this, this hey. super chat. The Nakatani fight was blessing in disguise. That fight exactly. is what got to mentally um, right for a Loma fight to take over Honduras. Bye -bye. Thank you, Samir. Good looking out for that. Good looking out. Let me pick it back. Hey, real off, quick. Off, off, off. Hold on, hold on. Let me. I'm on my fault. Black black. Just let me pick it piggyback off what D and and um Samir was saying about the amateurs. Because I when I was breaking down the fight two months ago, I was talking about the amateur and I was saying that Americans have a tendency to abandon the amateur their amateur career. We don't. We don't. We don't compliment them in the amateur career the way they do in the UK or across or, 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 or across the pond, like the UK and Asia and things of that nature. When you hear about um Joy Joyce, when you hear about um Loma, Usyk, and all, all these fighters at Eno Uwe, they, they praise what they did in the amateur circuit. But in America, it's like we just push it to the side. Teofimo Lopez, I was saying, if you go watch him, watch him right now, you can find YouTube, you can find a lot of tapes. You could watch that he could outbox in the amateur. He was a boxer puncher. He was boxing. He was not this terminator knocking everybody out. That was not that was not him. He was the guy that was outboxing people. He's an Olympian. He he did great in the Olympic trials. He did great in the Pan American game. You have to see what these guys do in the amateur circuit because when they're facing high level amateurs, the high, the high level amateurs is those fights that we see today. The mega fights today, they already fought those type of fights in the amateur circuit. So he was well schooled, and and that's why I saw. And and, and I'm gonna say it like this, y'all, because a lot of people like to critique Javante Tang Davis. So I'm gonna tell y'all right now, watch this man and what he did in the amateur circuit. A lot of people, y'all think he's flat footed. 
This Clap. dude boxes around. This dude has a lot of tools in the toolbox. I know a lot of people talk about him being non focus or whatever. I'm going to tell you like this. For tonight, see what this man was doing in the amateurs. Javante Tang Davis also has over 250 plus amateur bouts. Yep. I'm just saying. 251 and, and I think uh, 19 or something. But I will say this about Tank Davis. And I've always said this about Tank Davis. And you guys can track me on my channel. I got receipts. I've never disrespected that dude's skills. I've never disrespected Tank Davis' skills. It was always about the way Floyd and old wide nose Ellaby was moving this dude. That's what it was about, the way he was moving, making all of these call outs and not giving us anything. He called out Lomachenko, tell, put Lomachenko on notice, fight to Gamboa, but then goes back down to take another easy, easy fight. I don't care what anybody thinks about this Leo Santa Cruz fight. I don't want to hear this shit about taking Tank in the deep waters. He's going to beat Leo Santa Cruz like a fucking drum, man. He's going to beat that dude down. Santa Cruz is not the most defensively responsible fighter. He uses his face as a goddamn punching mat. And guess what? Tank's going to take advantage of that. Eh? That dude is the same thing I was saying about Lomachenko, right? Lomachenko and all of these people talking about, ah, you're acting like Lomachenko's never faced big punches before. Okay. Rigo, Rigo Ndau, you know what I mean? Uh, Nicholas Walters, Lenaris. Yeah, they were good punches. Big punches. Not like Tail female, right? When they put when they put them paws on Lomachenko, he kept coming forward. When Tail Female put that first stomach punch on him, first round, I did commentary for the fight. He tapped him upstairs, won a lot, but he blasted him to the gut. Right then is why Lomachenko wouldn't engage. It's not what Lomachenko sat around and waited to do. He felt that power he never felt before. See, Lenaris didn't give him that. Rico Dow didn't give him that. Nicholas Walters didn't give him that. But Teofimo Lopez gave him that. Teofimo Lopez controlled lead hand advantage. Teofimo Lopez cut off angles. All of those guys did not do that. Right? Yep. He knew. And, and, and I, I was having this debate also with um Eddie Chambers, Coach Anthony. Shout out. It was a good live show yesterday in their channel. If y'all want to go check out um coach anthony's channel he's going live now so he's doing you know, he's bringing in you know talking strictly technical box and i like it um we was having a discussion shout out to jennings too um he was out there too he's in the play in the panel and i was saying they were trying to say because i said lomachenko i mean tfm lopez neutralized lomachenko and they like nah nah they ain't neutralize him he just ain't do this so i said all right so he ain't neutralize him what it was just lomachenko didn't want to do nothing in the first and then he picked it up so it was all lomachenko it was all lomachenko's plan nah 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 once he felt that power tfm lopez took away high volume punching uh, uh, the high volume punching approach that lomachenko is very known for he took away the angles he took away movement he took away everything about Lomachenko and his aura. I t and I hate the guy to say I told you so, but I told you so. I said Lomachenko has everything in the toolbox, but he would not bring everything in the toolbox versus Teofimo Lopez. He would not bring it out. He can't afford to bring it out. It was just when Lomachenko actually stepped, the, stepped on his gas, because I watched the fight again, and he did his little matrix on the eighth and ninth round. Tia Fimo had some answers for him. And he, he and Lomachenko was like still in shock. I like, said the Lomachenko. money punch will be that uppercut. And every time when he did have momentum, here comes that little counter uppercut to stop. He was Lomachenko. doing good with that uppercut, huh? He was doing so good. I, I, I predicted about KO by an uppercut, but at least he hit, he hit him with the body shot, you know? Now, I will we'll agree. That? Now, we'll agree. Lomachenko's second half was, was, was better than... Teofimo Lopez will have more action than Teofimo Lopez first half. Yet, once you're having a consistent round by right, round by round, winning number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, can you just imagine the judges? Now, it's becoming too repetitive. It's not like he's losing two and then he's winning one and losing one and then winning one. No, it's just that it's, it's very consistently that he's just not putting in that work. My scorecard... Again, 100, 117, 111, two swing rounds, number 10 and number 7. You could give it a Lomachenko, and then it'll be 115, 113. 
That's my scorecard. One's 117, one, one, 111. But you could give those two rounds. It could go either way. So 115, 113 is the probably the most respectable card. I had it. I had it. And, you know, again, I was doing blow by blow commentary. So I had it six to five going into the 12th round. That's basically how I had it. I also had a swing round in there. Six to five going into the 12th round. So here's my logic on it. Lomachenko could at best get a draw out of that. But Teofimo took the 12th round, which made it 7-5 easy for me. Easy. No arguments. Now, the judge that had it 119 to 109 was drinking and smoking dust. He was on crack. He that, that fight. That was a travesty. There's no way you could tell me that Lomachenko only won one round. That's ridiculous, okay? So I don't know what that judge was doing. Maybe he was on the phone like Perry O'Connor and the goddamn uh, Ritson fight, sitting there on the goddamn phone. Maybe that's what that judge was doing. Because he damn sure wasn't watching that fight. I feel it. I feel, I, yeah, I, feel, I, I did it pound. I did it pound. Y'all know how I do it. I do it round by round, punch by punch. I count who's pacing every 30 seconds. I'm going to let y'all know. Who's controlling that pace for the 30 seconds? Move on to the next 30 seconds. Who's controlling right. the pace ring generalship? I just, in the whole fight, I just didn't see Lomachenko controlling no pace, being the ring general of that fight. Yo, Loma, wow. even, even, even when he was doing good throughout the three minute intervals of those rounds, Teofimo Lopez was still controlling the pace. It was his fight, his time at probably all times. So but he did get hurt in there. Teofimo got hurt in the fight, but he, he dug deep. He, he dug deep. He got pushed. Yeah, he, got pu he got pushed back. It got pushed back. There's a couple of things that I did. I, I didn't want to see um Teofimo Lopez do. Um, when he was when he was pushing off, I would have loved to see him push off, but then bang bang to the body instead of push off and then push off, because then it just looked like he's being overwhelmed that he's not liking being overwhelmed, right? Um, so. The headbutts, the headbutts, people could complain about the headbutts, but we already know it's Southpaw versus Orthodox. So we're gonna that that's probably is inevitable that at least one headbutt is gonna occur. So I'm I was I wasn't too much about I wasn't too much mad about the headbutt, but it, there was one time that it seems like Lomachenko felt like he was frustrated and needed to be dirty. And that's when I said, All right, Lo Tio really got this guy because now wow. he's about to fight like Salido. <laughs> he got him frustrated to where now he got to fight a little dirty. Um, that was the ninth round up against the road. Lomachenko launched that hit, but that won't yeah. answer them. He but Lomachenko got over. four flurry shots on him on the eighth round. Four flurry shots on Theo. But put it this way. Theo held it. Punch, but put punch, it this way. Uh, black and brown need a link again. He, he, he had to get back in. And I want to say oh, something right quick before we get too deep into this. Hey, Punch, I want to petition the, um, the HR department and... To 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 recant D. Jefferson's comment about you and him was the only one that's been supporting um Teofimo Lopez live live on your show. Bro, you ain't getting away with that. You ain't getting away with that. Well, my bad, my bad world on uh, combat sports, bro. I, I my apologies for man. I got mad love hey, for Tio. Man. I've been rocking man, with him. Let me, let me, let me rephrase that then. Punch drunk and myself was the only one that I know of. Because I ain't okay. been over to your channel. I, so you. I, <laughs> I know. Oh, and that was the whole point I, I was that. trying to make. I understand, D. Jefferson. You have a visit. It's all good, yeah. my brother. But I, I was just putting it now, out though. there. Especially since I know you ride for my boy. I'm coming over. No worries. I'm coming yeah, over. Yeah, 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 bro. I, I, was, I, I was on, D, I was on your panel fucking rider for TR. I lost. I, I won money right here. Matter of fact, your points, I need that money that I want from Rapstar, homie. Yeah, we all <laughs> picked TR to win. Hey, yeah. major key. <laughs> Yeah, I can vouch for you, man. You did go for Theo Fimo, but you said that the money's going to the platform, blood. Yeah, yeah, Hell yeah. Nah, I didn't say that. Yeah, he no. put it. He put it. Check, he he's not for no money up. Yeah, Red, so you money. put no money up. I gave money, but you said you want the money at the in the platform. I never said that, bro. But yes, I mean, did, I'm okay. you know what? Boxes. Okay, let me tell you, Major Key, look we'll at the look last at show. You know what? It's you know what? Dude, it's all good. We could give that to the platform, but I, I didn't say that, bro. If I would have put a hundred, you would have said that to me. I would have been like, like, like heated right now. No, but that's what you did say. You must have drank something good last. Nah, bro. <laughs> I, I never said that. I, I, I never say that. I say we give. Well, you say we give a percentage to the platform. That's what you said. Yeah, but percentage. You, you turned around and said, "Let's just give that twenty to the platform." That's what you. Nah. Said. 
Hey, rap star, I do, I do want to make an open bet to you. You know, there's probably down the road that um, Tia Fimo will not face Devin Haney at 35. Um, I, I better bill with you on that. I haven't, I haven't even thought about that bet. You just made. Oh, that I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm giving you exclusive. I'm just yeah. telling you up front. So you're making, a, a, you're you making a bet. Up, you're making a bet up that I need to think about. <laughs> no, you're a bet man of everybody. Yeah. You're a bet so man. I got, yeah, but I'm a smart betting man. So let me let me just. I was smart that. too because I collected on Tio. No, I collected me, on my boy, man. Mad combat. love to Tio and his no, family. World comeback. Let me tell you what I think is going to happen. I think Fia Fima is going to take the uh, the back step. He's got every right to tell now. Devin Haney can fight the winner of Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. Now, if they make that fight, the winner of that fight will be a huge fight against Fia Fima for big money. That's what I think. But well, that means Tia Fimo ha have to homestay at, at 35. That's not the plan. That's not the plan for him to homestay at 35 can, for 2020. He can fight with Lenaris. He can, he he can, can still stay busy with Lenaris, yeah, though, and add to his legacy. Oh, I'm not, I'm not yeah, saying. He can fight Lenaris, add to his legacy, stay busy. Okay, because yeah. Punch is confident. Punch, if Fia Fimo fights Devin Haney now, don't you see some attributes in Fia Fimo that where he can win that fight? Yeah, I think, I think Tia Fimo Lopez beats everybody. But oh, you, oh, but oh, you're asking, you're asking you him to like wait that. on Devin Haney. You, you're asking you. him to wait on Devin Haney to fight Garcia and Campbell winner. That's that's the entire year 2021. Another fight camp, and then the fight at the end of 2020. Oh, they just told you he can fight yeah, Lenares right, or somebody. Yeah. He can no, fight no, Lenares. Lenares not in the question, man. He's not fighting Lenares at 35. Let me ask this right quick, Punch. Now, I'm pretty sure they, they relayed the same information to Punch Drum, but the plan is to go to 140. So I want to I want to ask you guys this is talking about this Correct. sticking around for Haney fight Lenars and this shit. So I want to ask you guys. He just beat the man. The man. He's sitting Talk there him. holding all the belts. You, you guys see my picture. Talk what the him. fuck did he have to wait around for Haney for at any level? Especially fucking with a, a Lenars. This kid just fought champion after champion and the plan is to fight another champion. Fuck Lenars. Okay. And, so and, and Lenoris lost the freaking moment. Kinko, man, come You're on. You're asking him to fight the winner of Ramirez and Josh Taylor straight away. No, no, Rockstar. You're not asking him a goddamn thing. That is his plan, fam. And, and see, that's what it is. Let me tell you something else, too. This is what's wrong with a lot of boxing fans in today's era. We always wish for the nostalgia of the old school. Well, the nostalgia of the old school when fighters challenging them fucking selves. Mm -hmm. Fighting the best competition they can fight. Not the pity pat bullshit they're doing today. But now you get a kid like Teal Fimo that's ready to take that challenge and bring back the nostalgia of old school and we want to talk about fucking Lenaris and shit. No, no, no. Let's take it back to the old school. Right? Let's put the heat on these other fucking young guns to step the fuck up, stop chasing money, and get it done. Clap it yeah. up. Yeah, I was, just, I was just speaking. And, and that, on, I was just speaking on his options at one thir at one thirty five. He could really do, do what the fuck he wants if he decides to stay at one thirty five. I was just speaking on what was there for him. But you're right. Balls in his court, bro. He calls the shots. He does what he wants. Go chase w one belt or two belts at one forty. Yo, or all Bill Haney fuck, said today. Bill Haney said it's in uh, their court. It's in Theofimo's court. He calls the shots. It they is. It, yeah, it but is. Lenar, why, 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 why go back to the conversation? No, though, I just Lenar. said Lenars is a stay busy. I just said Lenars is a stay busy fight to add something to his legacy. That's all I said Lenars for. Because, like I'm saying, I feel like Luke, uh, Ryan Garcia, and Devin Henney got to fight each other to make it to Tia Fimo. That's so like that's I, like I, Gamble I in reverse. Stay busy fight. Fight. If, if I just said Lenars is a stay touch. busy fight. If Tia Fimo gets a light touch. Or stay busy fight. It shouldn't be no fucking Lenars. No disrespect, black no. It should be somebody at 140 to acclimate to that division. If he's not gonna fight another champion, it should be somebody at 140 to acclimate to that division before he takes on Ramirez or Taylor. He shouldn't fuck around with Lenars. What is Lenars gonna get him ready for? But if he got, he got, he got, he got, <laughs> he got he got straps too. So, you know, if he stays long enough, he's going to get mandated to fight somebody in the IBF for the WBO. Right. That's right. If I may jump in, because I'm going to jump out. And, and I was on for a minute before I no, even jump out. No, 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 Man. Shit, I'm thinking just throw him to the lion. I'm just thinking, I'm not even thinking about giving him a shot. I'm thinking about throwing him to the lion. And I like 
honestly what Hugo Chan- Sanchez said about I like Zepeda. That's a good fight too. That's at one forty. Yeah, there's, there's, no there's no price with Zepeda. There's no price with Zepeda. There's not a good price for him with Zepeda. He's got a big price against R- uh, Ramirez and Josh Taylor. Go ahead. A big price. Yeah, but we have to go wait for that fight. Go ahead, Major Matching. King. What you were saying? All right, so yeah, like um, I mean, for, first and foremost, uh, because I never got to, to the chance to recap, you know, what I'm saying everybody got kind of jumped in, and and uh, I've been waiting for like 20 minutes. But when it come down to it, uh, from, from one one thing that I saw, um, the first six rounds, um, was was not that, um, you know, that uh, that Lomachenko did anything like uh, like you know, superior or or he didn't let go or anything like that. It, it wasn't about him. And uh, what it was about was Tiafimo not biting the feints because he's used to people biting, you know what I'm saying? And he was trying. He was trying to, like, see what, what, what he would bite into. And, and, and Lopez had the eye of the tiger. What he was doing was basically just waiting, waiting, and he was pouring. He was pouring to measure. And then because he was doing such an excellent job at that, Lomachenko, when he tried to uh, throw a punch to, to measure the distance, he wasn't able to because Lopez wasn't biting. He wasn't biting the feints. So if you look at that, right, that's what was frustrating Lomachenko through the first six rounds. And then after that, Lomachenko just said, decided, you know what? I'm already down six rounds. I'm going to go in. And so he went in. And when he went in, he was getting countered too. You know, at first, uh, Loma, uh, Lopez didn't expect him to, to be jumping in because that's not what he did for the previous six rounds. So at first, you know, it was very competitive. And then uh, Lomachenko uh, started getting that um, – that jab over the uh, the left hand of, uh, of Lopez, he started. That's why his left eye was uh, was was a little bruised up. He started tagging him real quick because he's got speed. But then you know, at some point, Lopez turned up the volume too, and he started uh, countering him, and it started. It became a brawl. It became a little war. You know what I'm saying? So that's why the second half of the fight became interesting, is because Lomachenko had to do it. He had to because the first half of the fight, he thought he was going to bait uh, uh, Lopez, and, and Lopez didn't take the bait. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He was very, very, man. He was a hawk in there, man. He ain't fought for no feints at all. He was there like a like a hawk. He was very focused, man. He was very focused. Worse. So I'm gonna chop it off though. Uh my, my battery's down. I'm gonna chill with the wifey. But uh, but yeah, man. Y'all have a great night. You too, my brother. I truly feel, feel support. Right, bro. Good night, bro. All right. Yeah, yeah. Salute, Major Key. Subscribe to Major Key Boxing. Subscribe to Major Key Boxing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I truly believe that at this point in time, Teofimo Lopez, um, they have two tough fights like that and to face the top pound-for-pound pound guy for the longest of time, why are people basically still saying he has a third step to prove himself? He proved himself in the 35 division. Now he makes the choices. He makes the demands. You know, he has the power in his court and do it the right way. And I'm pretty sure senior is going to make sure he, he keep they keep on doing it the right way. And that's progressing forward and becoming the, um, one of the biggest names in the sport of boxing. Now, let's also give props to the guy that gets critiqued probably the most in this buildup. The trainer, T. from Lopez Sr. Yeah. He outclassed, he, out, he outgamed Papachenko. They yeah. scared. They scared. Yeah, he got he, he got he got, he got Anatoly. Anatoly got all of the accolades, you know, the national championship trainer. He trained Usyk, Vazdik in the amateurs. You know, he had a couple of guys the gold medals. You know, he has all the accolades of being a trainer, right? But the guy who's only trained his son outdid him that night. Point blank. His game plan was better. His yep. game plan was better. Yeah, and shout out and shout out, but, but also uh, that's why I said um he was on the show, so shout him out as well. He was on the show um when was it when um uh, when I was doing the Charlo event um the assistant coach. Not um what's his name? What's his name? He was here too. Let me get his name. Let me get his name. The assistant right. coach of Tiafima Lopez because I said because I asked Tio, 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 uh, I asked um his pops. I said yo. How 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 much did you have to trust? Because remember, they've been doing it by themselves to reach to this level. But it took it took ego pushed aside, in which a lot of people always feel like it's gonna be his father that's gonna, you know, that's gonna be his downfall. 
It took trust and ego pushed aside for him to implement somebody in their system that was working with Lumachenko. That's a chess move. That's a chess move. And it took a lot of ego pushed aside and a lot of trust. That was a smart move by Teofimo Lopez uh, um, Sr. He outgamed, he outplanned Papachenko. He did. He did, bro. Teofimo gave him the, the commemorative Chainers belt. I like that. I like when he gave him that belt. Gave yep. him a hug. Oh, you, you won the belt too, Pops. That was good shit right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but you know, what we can't, right. you know, the panel, what we can't do is, right, is still not put respect on Lomachenko's name. We still got to have respect on Lomachenko's name. Yeah. Oh, he got all respect. He got all respect. Yeah. Punch We're because. not taking any respect from Lomachenko, but he was defeated. We took a lot of respect. Punch took him out the top, uh, pound for pound top 10 today. I mean, he don't have any belts. All the guys well, 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 first, pound okay. for pound has championships, man. Oh, That's okay. Look, 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 look what Lomachenko's this, done, this, bro. But this is the pro this the issue. This, this the thing is sometimes it's not about that a person wanted to look my pound for pound list today was what have you done for me lately? Pound for pound lately, right? But also no, he's done a lot. But the thing is, you have to reward others that's doing it. Look, the reason why, for example, a lot of people kept triple G, kept triple G um on the pound for pound list after losing to Canelo is because it was two pound for pound caliber fighters going at one another. So you lose into another pound for pound. You just don't leave the pound for pound. But Tiffany Lopez didn't walk into the ring being a pound for pound fighter. True. You know, now if Tiffany Lopez was on the pound for pound list fighting Lomachenko, they know you don't, you don't, you don't take him out. But there's a lot of names that's been that accomplished. Look, I put Jamal Charlo on my on my top 10. Yeah, you have to put him out. Where did, you have Lomachenko? Where did you have Lomachenko before going into this fight? Where did you have Lomachenko? I had him top three. And now he's not even in the top 10. So what I'm saying is, I think he, I think he, you know what I mean? There's not, he's going to lose a lot of credibility for this fight, but he didn't lose this fight that easy either. You know I, but saying? I wouldn't look, look, I would have never took, I had Anthony Joshua before. I would have never took Anthony Joshua, but he lost to a, to a Andy Ruiz that was not a pound for pound caliber fighter. If there's two pound for pound, I'm going to give you an example. Bud Crawford, Earl Spence, they're, bo they're both on a pound for pound list. If one of them lose to one, to, to, if one of them lose, I'm not going to take one of them out the pound for pound list because it's two pound for pound dudes going at one another, you know, but you losing to a younger guy, a guy that nobody thought that was going to outbox you. Uh, you was a high favorite to win the fight. Young. People felt like probably he was still green. And he beat so, you. But you lost to a young, not even pound, pound fighter. Yeah, but how sad yo, punch real quick. Yo, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, punch real quick. If, if Tafima was to win on 140 and become undisputed, where would you rank him? He's Come on, that's one. not even a question. Of course, one. he's number one. But look, uh, number uh, one, man. Rob, start checking out. Uh, Julius, Ring IQ, Ring IQ, took Lomachenko out. Okay, he has a whole different criteria, a totally different criteria from Punch Drunk, because I know what it is. He took him out based on his criteria. So, I mean, that's just it. See, the pound for pound, this is subjective anyway. But that's what Punch said. Boxing's a lonely sport. And now that he's lost, he's getting already a lot of hate, yeah? And what, what I'm seeing now that he's not even recognized of what he's done so far with a lot of people. He's actually, I think he still should, if he's out the pound for pound, he should just be out of it. He, yeah, you know but, I mean? but okay, 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 okay. So think about it like this. All right. He lost right now to a guy that's not pound for pound fighter. Tiofimo Lopez. Yeah, but that now look at everybody. Now look at now, now look at everybody still on the list. You got to reward Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo before him winning was not on my pound for pound list, but I was saying before that that he's honorable mention. If he does win these titles, you have to put a guy that has three titles with his resume fighting rank fighters, high level rank fighters within his weight class. I put Jamal Charlo. People are mad that I got Jamal Charlo on the pound for pound. I got oh. Jamal Charlo there. Um, yeah, it, I, I didn't want to put no tights. I, I didn't want to put a heavyweight, but I put a Tyson Fury there. You know, now if I take the heavyweight out, then I'll then I'll then I'll put in Estrada there. I put in Josh Taylor there, where a lot of people are gonna critique me there too. But I got Josh Taylor there, and number but nine. Lomachenko's been dominating the boxing sport for over four years. Dominating. 
What have you? But my pound for pound today was what have you done for me lately? I'm not going by what you did 2016 and 2017. Why you think uh, Buck Crawford came a little down? Because he's not fighting ranked fighters. He's about to fight Buck. Uh, he's about to fight Kell Brook. Now, hey, I'm glad you know, I'm glad you shared that about ranked fighters there, Punch, because Alexander Usyk, um, what was Chase Witherspoon ranked at? He shouldn't even be as high as he should if no, it's but, what have you done for me lately. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Usyk should be somewhere down in the bottom five. Well, hold, the on, only thing hold, on, hold on, hold on right quick, because yeah. I got something to say about Usyk, and I've said this before, and why he still deserves to be there. Because he cleaned out one, uh, he cleaned out Cruiserweight, but this, check this out. It's not about him going and beating a guy like he beat World Star. It's about the fact that he moved up a week. Yes. He's a fighter there. Yeah. Correct. What, so, kept him there, what, kept him there, world, what kept him there, world, for me is that he went to the heavyweight and beat a heavyweight. Right. And beat a heavyweight. You that's understand? So, so, okay. If that's the criteria, him moving up in weight to beat a, a non ranked heavyweight, which was probably what? In the top 100 or something like that, Chase Tracy with a spoon. I understand where you're coming from, but I'm just I'm just saying, what have you done for me lately? He vacated the belts and he moved well, up. He just, he he the touch. The Chase with a spoon was test. a soft touch let's when he moved to up to heavyweight. Yeah, That's but put it all right. Okay, okay. Let's say let's say like this. Okay. He Super beat, soft. He, he beat he beat he beat Michael Hunter. If he would have beat Michael Hunter in a heavyweight, would have been a good win. Correct. Well, and he beat him it, again, he beat him at cruiserweight. But what He'd I'm saying Michael is, like, what have you done for me lately? And you giving him credit for moving up the heavyweight and facing Witherspoon, but Witherspoon is like a soft touch, though. But he's moving up in heavyweight. Remember, heavyweight, you could you could be 170 pounds. Correct. Staying active, too. Staying you active. Anyway, let's just put it to the test. I'm asking the panel. Give us your top five. Like and subscribe. Super chat if you can. But give us a top five in the panel, too, so we know where Uzik stands. Oh no, it's no it's no need because Usyk's not in my top five, so it, it'll be a waste of time. I'm but not, I'm you know, I'm, 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 I'm not. But I'm not. But 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 I just want to clarify my pound for pound. My pound for pound is what have you done for me lately? Yeah, it's not. It's not. I I I love Buck Crawford. He did what he did, 2017. Um, but I had to put him down because what had he done for us lately? My we can't father. keep leaving it. We can't keep leaving. Book, in my opinion, my opinion, because like I said, there's not no ego driven. Um, um, I this is not like I put it on stamp. I love to talk boxing, and I could reconstruct with y'all help at the same time. But my opinion, Book Crawford, last three opponents, is not even high rank in their respective division. So these other guys like Inoue that goes in the Super Series beats Nonito Donaire. Now he's gonna be fighting Jason Maloney. That's in his top what top ten rank. Um, you know, a lot of people felt that Jason Maloney beat Emmanuel Rodriguez, and that was his only loss. That's gonna be a good fight. Um, who else? Manny Pacquiao. That's gonna be a discussion. Manny Pacquiao for me beat a uh, 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 undefeated, uh, undefeated Keith on Tom Thurman. Earl Spence beat a pound for pound caliber fighter and Mikey Garcia, but a lot of people felt that you know um he was too big, but he beat up another pound for pound caliber fighter and he fought Sean Porter and he's going back to back with Danny Swift Garcia. Is what have you doing for us lately? You know what what, we, what has a you know speaking of a newie, right? Who did he fight before he stepped in there with Donaire? Pinano, right? You know he's a three division champion, though, right? I know, I know he's a three division champion, but what have you done for me lately? Didn't come just three division champion, okay? He's been unified for quite some time, right? No, no, he just unified with Anita Donet. He just unified. Okay, I stand, I stand corrected because I stand corrected. Yo, Pars, I'm about to head out. Yo, good night. Good night to everybody. Salute. Right, Salute, Guido. man. All right, Guido. Good night. Salute. Salute. So so, I was yeah, just thinking so, about who he fought before Nonito Donaire, and him being one of the one of the top fighters. Because, from my understanding, it was Nordino Bali. Anui had, you know, the WBA and IBF, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but look, bro, he fought he fought an undefeated Emmanuel Rodriguez right before he fought Nonito Donaire, fam. Emmanuel right. Rodriguez was nineteen and zero, so he goes yeah. from an undefeated fighter, defeats him, and then goes right to Nonito Donaire. Let me, ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How do y'all respect the Super Series? I like it. I love you it. have to respect that. It's, it's I like according it. to the names is in there, the, the um, World Boxing Super Series. But yeah, I respect it. Absolutely. It's not. So, 
It's not so, the Super Six, in my opinion. You know, well, that's okay. what, what Josh Taylor. No, I respect that thing. exactly. I respected that so much. I put Josh Taylor on my on that's my right. pound for pound that's list. Right. Feel me? Yeah. Josh so, Taylor goes in the top three if he beats Ramirez. He goes in my top that's three. That's right. That's right. Jefferson definitely, goes in, mate. Definitely. That's right. Yes, yeah. I put some respect on the English fight. I mean, Scottish fighter there. Oh, oh, oh! I'm big on Josh, bro. That's the dude. So let's say so, so, so who who are they talking about? Canelo's next opponent, Gildrum, right? Right. right. But it's you so know where you guys are wrong. Errol Spence changes the game if he beats Danny Garcia. He comes in the top five. But that's what I mean. Okay, so my opinion. Errol this Spence is what I mean. It. But Bud it, Crawford doesn't change nothing. Yo, but. Bro. but Exactly. So, but a lot Rap of people. If you look, if you look at, if, if, if you look at every, if you look at most of the people's even high pugilists, rank for rank, um, um, pound for pound ranking list, they got him under Buck Crawford. But if Errol Spence beat Danny Silva Garcia, a high rank in his in, in his respected he division, over, he's going above Buck Crawford. Yes, he is. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, like you saying, okay, Buck Crawford gets no respect for Kell Brook, right? Who who Errol Spence defeated, but yeah, he gets you know, credit for Danny moment, Garcia, who Sean Porter to... look, who Sean Porter defeated, and then Errol Spence Bro, defeated. What have you done for me lately? That's again? what that's what, what I mean. Saying, that Kel Brook, Kel Brook, Kel Brook, Kel Brook was too look. Kel Brook, Danny was Garcia 2000... just lost, man, not too long ago. You know, Kel Brook, Kel Brook was 2017. Yeah, but Kel still, Brook he has not yeah. been in the in the welterweight ranking since then. He's yeah, not he even a high rank 154 pounder. Correct. He's coming back down well to Now, I'm going to tell you like this. If Buck Crawford would have gone to the 154 to fight Kell Brook, that would be different. But he's coming fights down. With Danny he's Garcia a champion at 47, though. You gotta World give him Combat, you made a statement, but those fights with Danny Garcia were very close. Kell Brook, 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 Brook. Yeah, Brook, yeah Brook, they were very Brook, close. Brook, I'm not denying Brook, that, but Brook, I'm just saying Brook, they, they acting like Kell Brook is nobody because it's Terrence Crawford. I'm not saying nobody. I'm saying in punches pound for pound, it wouldn't do anything for his status. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me let me ask you a question. Want, let me real quick. Let's just let me turn this tell book real quick. Uh, world star. I just talked to you too. Man. Look, check this out, man. Check this out. Kell Brook, three years ago when he fought Errol Spence, that was, was that. having terrible problems making weight. We yeah. gotta know that this dude is gonna be trained when he fights Crawford. How much credit are you gonna give him? Listen. Even the Errol Spence detractors, because I'm a fucking Errol Spence fan, right? Even yeah. and I don't know, I'm an Errol Spence fan, and he's not even in my top five. But I digress. Yeah. Even the haters, you know, of Errol Spence. Even then, he got minimal credit for beating Kell Brook three years ago. Kell Brook, Kell Brook was the man. man. Kell Brook was the man. Let me get this off. That Kell Brook was drained. And beat down from GGG. Now, three years later, when the dude is packed on muscle, that very he's not a spring chicken, he's older. What do you think? What kind of Kell Brook we're gonna have coming down to 147 now? He's gonna be extremely drained, fam. How much credit does Crawford? Hey man, get? I understand, I understand. Old, old but J Jefferson, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, and I'm gonna say, and I'm and I'm a, and I'm a, hold on, hold on, and I'm gonna say it like this also, guys, Dominique. Thinks it's a bad idea that to the point where he's not even training him. Eddie Hearn doesn't even feel like doing business with Kell Brook for what he's doing right now. Even his circle but don't see, believe in him. But really? see, Eddie Hearn, I mean, he wasn't, it wasn't too much praise behind him moving up in the first place to take the Triple G fight. So he's used to being a knucklehead and making his own decisions. You know what I'm saying? But you can't, you can't deny that. Um, the fight was pretty close. Yeah, but you can't and, really and say Kel that Hey, let, let me finish, man. Yeah. Uh, you can't deny the fight was pretty close with Errol Spence before no, it was he a good fight. Him. No, it was you a good fight. Saying? It was a good fight. I mean, fight. we want to talk about fight. Drain. It's up to Kel Brook to choose to come down to 47 and make the weight. It's up to him. You you have uh, Rigandale who just dropped down to Bantam weight and looked fairly well to pick up a dang secondary title. People drop down all the time. We just seeing Javante Davis going down to face Lil Santa Cruz. You know, I mean, yeah, hey, but, he hey, but you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know why they doing it for? It's not really for for the leg for for their legacy. It's really for yeah. their purse. Yeah, you know that Javante Tank Davis ain't fighting Leo Santa Cruz because he really want to compete himself versus he's doing it for the money. I'm he's doing it for the purse. Much, but I'm just saying, like, hey, it's a penalty in there for Javante to miss the miss the scales. So they want to take that risk and lose that money, and you know, 
and and just get a paycheck, they're gonna get punished for it. It's a huge penalty in there. People. Well, if you've been following Kell Brook's career, Kell Brook's career, World Cup, you know, for years he was on the fence. He wasn't getting paid no money after the Sean uh, Porter fight. Amir Khan was playing around with him. He wasn't getting any money from any fights. He got paid three million to step up because Eubank Jr. didn't step up and fight that GGG fight. Yeah? So if you've been watching boxing to the T, you know why he took that fight. He got paid a lot of money at the time that nobody was paying him, nobody was fighting him. Right? Remember, re remember, remember, he could have kept, kept, kept his belt. So because they said he could keep his belt, that was a business decision he made for three million pounds, which is like five million dollars. It happens all the time. Remember, right? Remember, it happens all the time. Remember this, money, bro, because he was getting pushed aside. Well, remember, he did it for anything that benefited him. Hey, it happens all the time in the sport of boxing. Why, why fighters choose to um to take a match up? It happens all the time. It may be good. It may be bad. Remember this. Remember, it can't be leveled down as an excuse as to you know what we're looking at right now. I understand. It's a, what have you done for me lately? Okay, it's an acclimation process for me. I I get it. I'm I'm listening. I'm tuned in. It's it's all that's good. Right. No, but that's just for me. That, but that's just you know my pound for pound how I call yeah. it today. Yeah, yeah. It's hey, not, right it's right not, right. not, it's not and Rapstar, not to get heavily money, could it. Rap star, your money over there. The pounds is not that much stronger than the dollar, fam. At the time, you know, at the time, million pounds at the time, even four million dollars. When fam. was when was the fight? When was the fight? 2017, 2017 May. 2017 at time, May. At the time, the pound was very strong. I know, but it wasn't that much stronger than the dollar. Like right now, three million, three million pounds ain't even four million dollars, fam. Yeah, because you're looking at today. If you look at one point four nine, that's around about five million dollars. And that's what the oh, rates were. Because okay. I play with currency. D. Jefferson, I play with currency, bro. So I know in 2017, it was at 1.48 or 1.47 marks. I play with USD and UK pounds and euros. Okay. Okay. Look, I say... I say you I, can I check it on I, Google, bro. Check it on Google, man. I don't think they'll penalize. I don't, think, I, I, don't, I don't think they penalize Javante Tank Davis with Leo Santa Cruz. You know why? Leo Santa Cruz, his son's name is Al Heyman. And they won't penalize him. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 contractually, it's contractually implemented, you know, so they won't be talking about it if it's not in the contract, you know, because when he was down here, he missed he missed um the scales by one pound, which I think he did on purpose. But then again, let's go to 130. He had that plan around with the scales down there, too. Yeah, two pounds. OK, but let me ask you something, Punch. Who do you give more credit? Terrence Crawford for being a Kell Brook this year or uh, Danny Garcia and Errol Spence for being Danny Garcia? Who wins on the pound for pound with you? Errol Spence. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Yeah, well, there you go. That's what I was telling World Combat. You didn't. You yeah. weren't telling me anything. I was just telling you when you know. I was just giving you some pictures to look at as far as you know what Kell Brook faced Errol Spence, and then people like, okay, well, when he faced Terence Crawford, he's just a soft touch, like he's a tomato can. You know, no, we have tomato him really. No, look, we, we have tomato. really seen him fight a good fight until he's gonna step in there with. Um, Terrence Crawford next month. And then for Danny Garcia, we have witnessed him. He stepped in there with Sean Porter lost. And then Sean Porter lost to Errol Spence. So yeah, his loss Danny, he has a little bit of Wall game. Street left in his name. He's stepping in there and people giving Danny Garcia a chance because Errol Spence had an accident. Shit, I don't give good. Danny Garcia no chance. I give Danny Garcia a shot, a shot in his ass. That motherfucker ain't going to win that fight. <laughs> I, give, I, give, I mean, I agree with I you, D. Jefferson. You know what I'm saying? But people giving them credit, you know, a little bit of credit to get that victory because Errol That's Spence Errol is coming Spence up to the next That's just Errol Spence hate. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll give him a shot. So we, of course, this, um, you know, we yeah, don't know how he's going to take. We don't know how you're going to take a, a, a eight-ounce glove from Danny Garcia. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, he, has a lot of, he has a lot of teeth missing. He had a lot of teeth and soft tissue damage and whatever they want to say. You just don't get ejected from a vehicle and you, you, you just have abrasions to the face. No, you had some soft tissue, some muscle damage, all that. Yeah. Look, check this out. So look, did you know uh, the article just came out on boxing scene, right? That uh, Errol Spence and his team. Right. Sounds silly to me, but they're targeting talking about Canelo. Right? So this is my idea on it, though. Right? Yeah, it's all over. Yeah, exactly. Right, I, think, I think now. that's a good step up for um, Errol Spence if he chooses. So here's what right now. If they're even targeting, thinking about, talking about Canelo, how much damage do you really think this dude got? If they even mentioning that, it's almost as if they're looking past Danny Garcia. 
Danny Garcia is gonna get his ass whooped, fam. Huh? Well, let me just tell you. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he, 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 he outschooled Mikey, but so D, so D Jefferson. Um, know, with that man. article, it, are they talking about targeting Canelo at sixty? At sixty, fam. Okay, so so you talking Errol Spence after this fight? Depending on how he look, he moved up two divisions. Hey, that's gonna be tough though. Canelo Alvarez ain't never coming back to one sixty. I'm gonna say it right now, he ain't never coming back to one sixty. That's gonna be tough, people. man. Yeah, he ain't never coming back. I don't see why you say that punch. Huh? I don't think I don't think they I don't think that there's the, the, the big money making fight at 160 and left is triple G. I don't think I, no, I just don't think that he would train himself and he's a big he's a big boy. You're not no, you're not tired of triple G. He's you're not, not that tired big. of triple G right now. Are, are you tired? He's not that tall, but he's 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 big. But look, punch, he put he see this is the thing. This is the thing. He packed on just to fight Kovalev. He never even planned the campaign at 175. But what he packed on to fight Kovalev, they shut it that fam. He's good for 160. Like, let's remember where he started from. He came up, right? So how long has he been inactive? How long has he been inactive for now? I how long has he been what? Inactive? Yeah, inactive. Shit, everybody major been inactive for a damn year. Pandemic. I just, I just think that one, one sixty eight, one sixty and one sixty eight is a big jump already. One sixty and one sixty eight is done, a big jump. He, he, he sets another level to his legacy. Of Errol Spence. Errol Spence is that guy. You know what I'm saying? I got to give him all the credit. If he chooses to take that leap of faith and he has the dog in him to do it, go challenge himself, man. Why not? Sugar Ray did it off. Boy, Look, Sugar Ray was off the sport from 84 to 87 and came back and fought Marvin's Marvin Hagler and, and took the belt. So, hey. Well, now, it's all about, now, 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 boxing is all about time and the momentum and it's about performances. If Earl Spence knocks out a uh, 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 Danny Sof Garcia and, set, and, and, you know, Send a statement, but he just can't give us a performance like Mike Garcia and be and go and go on a whole 12 rounds and then talk about Canelo Alvarez. It's not gonna it's, it, it, it for me. It you gotta do something spectacular in the lower division, and then you come back, and then and then people are gonna be like, Oh, yeah, in the next division going up, he could he could do he could make some damage, but you gotta do some damage. And the last two and your last two performance is not like I trust you at 160. Hell no. Mm. Well, I think people should lower their standards right away. Talk to this knockout shit. Because exactly. he, he might yeah. beat Danny Garcia. I got him beating Danny Garcia, but I'm not banking on or counting no fucking knockout. I, I, like I, I the, agree, the DJ. Guys, yeah, the three guys that we talked about before the accident with Chins, with Sean, Danny, and, Port, and uh, Spence. Sean, Danny, and Spence. Those were the three guys that had the Chins, right? So you talking yeah. about a guy with a proven chin? And Spence, Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman connected on him flush. Yeah, Keith, uh, Keith uh, Thurman couldn't knock him out though. But I'm just exactly. saying. I, but I'm just saying. Think about. It. I'm just saying the split decision was Sean Porter. You got the Mike Garcia that he won a whole twelve rounds, and then let's say he goes a whole twelve rounds with Danny Garcia. Are we going to talk about Earl Spence? No. They going to to Canelo? The no, no, of course not. We got Keith oh. Thurman there. We got Manny Pacquiao. We've, we've even got Bud Crawford. So he's not going to go there. Man, in between the fight, it's so long from now before we're going to see him fight Bud Crawford. It's just a... It's All a right, move. It's a move. Only, right Keith Furman, the only Manny point Pacquiao. that I do that, that I do see it is because I do... I said it once before and I'm going to say that. I do feel that even at 154, Earl Spence beats them all. I want, I want y'all to think about something here. And this coming from a, a big time Spence fan, bro. I'm always fucking arguing with people over Spence fan. Me and my partner ibfp we always get into it over spence but look I, I want you guys to think about this now this is this is an honest thought man and i'm a fan of spence it's not no hating shit i'm pretty sure like i'm like world combat sports we're pretty secure about the danny fight but let's say he is kind of fucked up right and he said okay i'll get through this danny fight go cash out with canelo and get the fuck out of boxing. No, nah, it's not gonna work like that, bro. Look, I know. Why not? I don't say, yeah, bro, why not? Bro, yeah. Why not? I don't want to say too much about Spence, yeah, but I do. I have been some places where I know Spence's dad, and I've seen him train. He trains. He trains 175 plus. His dad and his camp would never send him in unless he was a recovered man. 
I know that family. The dad is always yeah. His dad, his dad is cool. His so. dad doesn't leave him alone, bro. He's constantly yeah. on his son. And yeah, he's like a, he's like his manager. Yeah, man, and his dad's on Derek James. Yeah, yeah. I, under, I understand, but check this out, rap star. He just started sparring not too long ago, man. So he had issues, man. No, that yeah, was they probably waited for, uh, for a long time. Uh, that was because of the 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 teeth. Yeah, he was waiting for his screws in his mouth to heal so he can get his damn permanent. So that's the only reason he couldn't uh spar. But I'm gonna guarantee this, not guarantee, but I'm pretty sure. They were doing no no head contact sparring, like just getting in there. Bro, that them. guy spars 175. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing sparring, fam. They just won't punch it to the head, like body, you know, body work, getting in there, getting some shit going. Like, dog, he well, was, look, okay, you know, Errol Spence has it. his own promotion company. You know that, right? And in his promotion company, he has two fighters at 170 plus. He spars them. That's his yeah. fighters, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, just, guys, I'm about to um time out but if anybody going live let me know tell the people to go to your live you going live world d no no i'm going bro. live way to bed nigga. i just can't want <laughs> to talk with you right quick <laughs> all right all right all right yo yeah, about respect time to out. the panel respect it's been a pleasure panel. fellas appreciate you salute right. punch drunk d I'm jefferson out, world, world respect Sports. world comeback respect man respect respect thank you thank you guys all right, God peace out, bro. Peace, peace out, peace out. Number four, yeah. Before you go, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go a lot of more. We're gonna finish talking about that. I'll probably rearrange. I'll probably rearrange my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>